Right, welcome to this review and in-depth tactica here for the brand new uh, Codex for Tyranids. Uh, Games Workshop have sent me a copy ahead of time and in this video you're going to get to see uh, a review of all of the units uh, and then sort of talking tactically as well about unit combinations, which units seem to be strong, which ones seem to be weaker, uh, upgrades and combinations you can go for as well. Talk about points, uh, reductions and increases as well uh, in this case of this codex and some of the special rules, stratagems, warlord traits and so on. We'll cover all of that in this video. Alright, so you can get yours with, uh, from Games Workshop uh, or you can go to uh, a discount gaming store like Gaming Figures, that's where I get mine from. Uh, they do get Games Workshop and other gaming systems at a discounted rate, so you can check uh, them out. So, I'll flick through the artwork here. I'll try and stay nice and speedy here, getting through the codex without skipping uh, the important information here. So, this is the Look at the new book. Battle from a crag. The first tyrannic war. High Fleet Kraken. Doom of the Enden. Second tyrannic war, just all your background information here. High Fleet Leviathan. The war in Octarius. Battle of Val. Third tyrannic war. Looking really good. Galactic feeding grounds. Tendrils of the Great Devourer. Nice ideas for some colour schemes here. I think this artwork looks pretty new. High Fleet Aural Boris. Nice blue colour scheme, Look, actually looks quite nice. High Fleet Tiamat. I've heard of those two before, or seen those colour schemes. There's some interesting uh, suggestions there. Tyranny Incursions. That's the uh, that's not the front cover artwork, but nice bit of artwork there. Really capturing the atmosphere of a Tyrannic Invasion. This looks like blood drinkers here, fighting against Tyrids, Vanguard Organisms, Sky Swarm Bioforms, Jaunts, Synapse Creatures. I'll put them into categories here. Yeah, it's own approach, Neurofropes. Uh, so just haven't, done in, in, haven't done individual pages for each of the units, but put them into categories instead. Spores. Spore casters. Nice bit of artwork here. Amazing. Really weird one. Weird artwork here, fighting against the Imperial Guard. Not seen that picture before. Subterranean swarms. Great aspect for the Tyrians where you can burst up from under the ground. I'm a fan of some of those units. Carnifexes, let's see what's happened to Carnifexes. They've, one of the weaker units in Games Workshop have addressed that. It seems to be that way. More options available with them. Uh, and then Old One-Eye, one of the characters. Hive Tyrants, the Swarm Lord, one of the fantastic uh, plastic miniatures. Pretty good. Tyrannic Guards, Artillery Organisms, Feeder Organisms. There's a lot of units. And then you're onto your showcase of the different uh, unit types here. So classic units here, mix of monstrous creatures and then swarms of the lesser creatures here surging across the battlefield and then dominating the sky as well. Fighting against the Death Guard. Brilliant reference for your colour schemes for painting. There's some different colour scheme suggestions here. Always have been a fan of that purple. Uh, that's High Fleet Hydra. Looking good. Do I, I do like this colour scheme here. Mine, if you check out the channel, it's sort of a red, orange, yellow combination. Uh, there, you can see that in a lot of the games. But that is a nice colour scheme, that classic one there. Alright, so that's the showcase of the miniatures done. So we're going to the rules now. Uh, for Tyrannus, we'll see what's changed and what's remained the same. Alright, so uh, we'll go straight to Synapse here. So the High Fleet of your choice, and there's, there's traits for the different High Fleets that we'll look at later on. Units automatically pass morale tests if they're within 12 of any friendly High Fleet units with this ability. So that's Synapse. If you've got Synapse, it's auto pass on your morale for any units within 12. Then Instinctive Behaviour uh, has changed. Unless a uh, high fleet of your choice unit with this ability is within 24 
For any friendly synapse unit, you must subtract one from any hit rolls made for it when shooting at any target other than the nearest visible enemy unit. So you're not forced to fire at the nearest visible enemy unit now. You can fire other targets, but it's minus one uh, to hit. And you must subtract two from its charge roll if it declares a charge against any unit other than the nearest enemy unit. So really, being out of synapse now, it's not the end of the world like it used to be. Now there's not too much. There's hardly any minus two really at all. Uh, usually Tyranid units happy to charge closest units anyway, so it doesn't even prevent it from happening, so instinctive behaviour uh, It's not too much of a problem now, so that's that taken care of. Shadow in the warp Enemy psychos must subtract one from any psychic test they make if they're within 18 of any units of this ability Tyranid psychos are not affected. So that's those rules. Very straightforward um, and not much of a uh, not really much of a hindrance there to uh, units that are outside of synapse during the game. Anything is morale is good to stay within synapse if you can, just for morale, auto pass for morale, it means you can field your big horde units 20 strong if you use, lose 15 of them, but you're within that synapse range then you auto pass morale, that's very helpful if you're trying to maintain uh, larger units. So there's the war gear which we'll come back to sort of as we go along, cover the different unit types. So the first unit here is the Broodlord. So Broodlord then is 162 points. He hasn't changed in points cost compared to the index. Uh, he's movement 8, weapon skill 2+, plus, strength and toughness 5, 6 wounds, 6 attacks. Fantastic amount of attacks and at 2's to hit, really good. Leadership 10 to 4 up save. He's armed with the monstrous rending claws um, so strength of the user which is strength 5, AP minus 3, all of the hits coming at my AP minus 3 and then D3 damage. You can reroll failed wound rolls for this weapon. In addition, each time you make a wound of a 6, the hit is resolved to AP minus 6 and a damage of 3. So utterly horrendous. You charge him into a character, he's going to have great fun. Bring him down. He does have the 5 plus invun, the lightning reflexes. He can charge if he advances with swift and deadly. And then Brood Telepathy, you can add one to hit rolls in the fight phase for uh, Tyranid Gene Stealer units within six of any friendly Tyranid Broodlords. So I'm just going to say Tyranid here instead of the you choose your high fleet choice. So fantastic rules to pass on to Gene Stealer is a real incentive to take that kind of combination, which I've been doing in my new list. It seems to work really well. So instead of freeze to hit, you're on twos. He can attempt to manifest one psychic power and attempt to deny one. He knows Smite, which we'll cover later on. So that's him. Uh, Broodlord's fantastic. Really rate him as one of the top units for the Tyranids. So to use him well, you've got to keep him away from, keep him surrounded. You know, he can't be targeted. He's got six wounds as a character here. So if you tuck him away and hide him, the opponent can't shoot at him. If he gets caught out in the open and becomes the closest model, then he can be brought down and dealt with. So. If you want to get the best use out of him, keep him protected and away from being shot to bits. So the Hive Tyrant is next. Uh, he's 143 points. Exactly the same as he was in the index. So uh, because of his wounds, 12 wounds, he has the damage bracket here. So on a full bracket, uh, he'll be uh, movement 9. If you go for wings, which the points is 170, which again hasn't changed, then if he has wings he goes 16. Uh, uh, full, uh, full stat line here is weapon skill 2+, plus, ballistic skill 3+. plus. He's pretty good gun platform for shooting, it's pretty reliable firepower you can get from him uh, is an option as well. So, uh, he's strength 6, toughness 7. 12 wounds, like a vehicle. Atta four attacks, leadership 10 to 3 up so. so I'm to two pairs of monstrous scythe talons and a prehensile pincer tail. Now, the monstrous scythe talons is minus 3 in the AP, strength of the user and free damage. Three roll hit rolls are 1 for this weapon. If you've got two of them, uh, you get an additional attack each time it fights. So it becomes five attacks, re-rolling ones, if you have two of them. Pretty good. Uh, two's to hit as well. The prehensile tail is D3 damage 
No minus on the AP and strength use. Each time the bearer fights, it can make one and only one attack with this weapon. This is an addition to the bearer's attacks. Ah, so they have sorted this out. It used to be you had to take the prehensile tower or some similar kind of upgrade and you had to use one of your attacks as one of those and it was pretty annoying. But now you just get that as a bonus attack for having the tower, which makes a lot more sense. Yeah, so that's good. They've done well there. So that was annoying. I found that, that was annoying. I think a lot of Tyranny players are annoyed by that, but they have resolved that. That makes a lot more sense. So, bear in mind you'll pay for these. Uh, monstrous Sivan Talons for a Hive Tyrant is 15 points. Or if you take two pairs, it's 20. So you pay an extra 5 points to get the extra attack, which I think is well worth it. So that's pretty good. And then the Prehensile Pincer Tower is zero, so you get it for free. So, not bad, looking more streamlined here. This is looking pretty good. So Hive Tyrant may replace one pair of Monstrous Sivan Talons with an item from the Monstrous Bio Cannons or Monstrous Bio Weapons list. So I think now will be the time to check these out. Once we get these covered, this we need to refer to them again later. So, uh, Monstrous Bio Weapons. So, Monstrous Rending Claws, you can go for. So, I'll just go to here. Ah, they put melee weapons before shooting weapons. That's the first codex to do that, I think. Uh, so, Monstrous Rending Claws, we have covered that already for the Broodlord, and they will cost zero. Yep. Interesting. It's a free upgrade. Uh, then, Monstrous Bone Swords. It's strength for the user, AP minus two and free damage. Uh, you can make, model armed with Bone Swords can make additional attack with them in the fight phase. So not a bad weapon at all. And Monstrous Bone Swords is 20 points. Interesting. Lash Whip and Monstrous Bone Sword is strength for the user free damage if the bear is slain in the fight phase before it makes its attacks. Leave it where it is. When its unit is chosen to fight in that phase, the bearer can do so as normal before being removed from the battlefield. So you get to fight it even before you die, so that's not too bad. And uh, it is 15 points for that one, so they're all pretty good. I'm a fan of the uh, monstrous Simon Tannins, though, probably one of the more powerful weapons to use. Okay, then monstrous uh, bio cannons. So, two death spitters with slime and Let's have a look. So uh, they're seven points each, so you pay 14. You can go for two of them. Yeah, let's see how good they are. Range 24, Assault 3, Strength 7, AP minus 1 and 1 damage. It's not a bad weapon. You pick off wounds, bring infantry down with that. It's not too bad at all. Okay, so that's the yeah, that's 7 points each. Quite a cheap upgrade, that one. Um, then two devourers of brain leech worms. So devourer of brain leech worms. It's range eighteen, salt six, strength six, AP zero, and one damage. So quite tame. It used to be a lot better. But um, just because you could go around uh, the rear armor of vehicles and then destroy it, take off hull points pretty quick. But now nowhere near as effective. So not that great. Um, Again, seven points a time. So quite tame those shooting weapons. Probably wouldn't bother with either of those two. The strangle form cannon. You can't take more than one of them. Let's see what this one can do. Uh, strangle form. Twenty-five points. So Twenty-five points as opposed to fourteen. But it is range thirty-six. Strength. Uh, assault D6, it's quite random, you could roll dreaded 1, or you could get 6 shots. Strength 7, AP minus 1 and 2 damage. 
You can have one to hit rolls for this weapon when attacking a unit of ten or more models. It's not a bad weapon. It's not too bad. Just a bit unreliable with the rate of fire. And then the heavy venom cannon. And that will cost 25 again, so for the same points cost, you can get Assault D3, range 36, strength 9, AP minus 2, and free damage. Nice. So heavy venom cannon's nice. And it's a decent weapon. I think they've improved that over the stat line it used to be. Uh, yeah, no, it's not bad at all. So, and if. Yeah, no, he is good. Alright, so I'd probably go for that one. Out of all of those, I'd probably choose the Heavy Venom Cannon. And then, yeah, no, I'd probably rate, I'd go with that one. So that's the options you can take. Then it says, I have time to replace both pairs of Monstrous Silent Tens with two items from the Monstrous Bio Cannons, or two items from the Monstrous Bio Weapons list. So you can really go for any combination you want. You can take Wings, which is 170 points, plus your upgrades. If it does so, use the second. Moving bracket moves you up to 16 inches and you get fly. Uh, this model may have toxin sacs or adrenal glands. Be interested to see what these do. So I'll give you a page number here. Just the two for biomorphs now. So adrenal glands. If this unit has adrenal glands, add one to the distance it can move when it advances or charges. Okay, so if that's cheap enough, you can go for it. Adrenal glands for monsters is five points and one point for other units. Yeah, maybe just to gain the extra inch. And then toxin sacks. Any wound rolls of six in the fight phase for model uh, with toxin sacks causes one additional damage. Mm, it makes your damage a bit more potent. And that costs two points for Hormigan. Toxin sacks for Hive Guard, Morlock, Termigant, Turvigon, Tyrant Guard, and Terran FX is one point. Toxin Sacks for Trigon and Trigon Prime is 8 points. And then for Carnifex, Gene Stealer, Hive Tyrant, Tyranny Prime, Tyranny Warrior is 4 points a time. Yeah, don't ever bother with that. Mm. You need to roll a 6 for any damage, get an extra bit of damage coming through. You can easily forget that in the middle of a game. So, no, they're not that potent, those ones, I don't think. Um, okay, so that's those. Shadow in the Warp and Synapse, which you've seen. Bill of the Hive Mind, the range of Hive Tyrant Synapse ability is 18 rather than 12. That's a nice big bubble, that one. The only danger is he can be shot at because he's 12 wins. Yeah, so he can be picked on, which is a shame. Broodlord's better for hiding. Swooping Assault, um, so you can deep strike basically as long as you're more than 9 inches away when you land with the one with the wings. Death Throws, um, and that's a 6 and it's more to wounds. And then he does have a Psychic Barrier, which is an Invun Save. So he's given Invun Saves to the Tyrannus now. So we bring them up to the same level as the other armies. So Hive Tyrant just there. And he can manifest two Psychic Powers and deny one. So he's okay. He's not bad. I wouldn't say he's utterly amazing. He's sort of in between. Um, but pretty rock solid. I would... I like the Swarm Lord. He's a lot more expensive, but... You know, if you can't afford a Swarm Lord, then obviously take a Hive Tyrant. Rate the Brood Lord a bit better, especially if you're going for like a Gene Steeler thing. Done with it. The Hive Tyrant's okay. So we'll look at the Swarm Lord next. All right, so Swarm Lord is 300, I think. Yeah, he's 300 points. Oh boy. And the only pro the, the, the problem is he's going to get targeted. This is the problem with the with the Swarm Lord. Oh dear, this is it's a great unit, but. It's going to get picked on as an HQ. You know, he could almost be more deadly if he had like eight wounds because of the way you could hide if you do that. But anyway, um, so yeah, he's 300 points in the index as well. So there's no change in points for him. Weapon skill 2 plus, plus it's skill 3 plus. Strength uh, is 8 if he's on full strength. Movement 9, by the way. Uh, 12 wounds, 6 attacks. These should tend to free up, so. There's a single model armed with Bone Sabres and a preempt sub pincer tower, only one per army. The Bone Sabres is, is a strength for the user, which is strength 8, AP minus 3, and free damage. He's a, oh, he's a killer. Each time you make a wound of a 6 for this weapon, you get a, a mortal wound caused as well. You'll kill a vehicle. 
will kill a vehicle in one round. Comes with a prehensile tower, which we've seen the rules for already. Shadow the Warp and Synapse, he does have his 4 plus Invun. Blade Parry, add one to the Swarm Lord's Invun saves against wounds caused by melee weapons. Fantastic, it's very, very durable in close combat. He's a Hive Commander, in each of your shooting phases you can pick one friendly unit within six of the Swarm Lord. This unit can move and advance if you wish, as if it was the movement phase instead of shooting. So all of a sudden, one of your units can lurch ahead. Very, very helpful. You will have the Hive Mind, because it's all about that speed of closing down the gap if you're going to play aggressive. Closing for the kill. Will of the Hive Mind, 18 inch synapse, death throws. You can manifest two and deny one. So no, he's fantastic. The only issue with him is being targeted, but Hive Guard could help him out and the other Hive Tyrant as well. So that's that one. Tyranny Prime is next. Tyranny Prime is a flat 100 points. And again, same as he was in the index. Movement 6, 2 plus weapon skill, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength toughness 5, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, leaves your tender 3 up save. So under Scyvin Tans and a Devourer. So we cover the rules for Devourer here. It's uh, 18 inches, assault 3, strength 4, AP minus 0, and then 1 damage. So just a pretty standard weapon. Ballistic skill is 3 plus for him. Uh, Simon Tens cover the rules for that. It's reroll ones, get an extra attack if you have two of them. And it's strength use at AP zero and then one damage. It's very, very tame indeed. Very, very tame. Not going to expect much from him. You may as well pay out for a hive tyrant. Uh, so you can replace the devourer with uh, basic bioweapons or melee bioweapons. The model may replace its Simon Tens with one weapon from the melee bioweapons. Uh, this model may have flesh hooks, which is strength six, sorry, uh, range six, assault two, strength user, zero, AP, one damage. And you can fire them like a pistol. In combat, you can take toxin sacks and adrenal glands. So the Devourer is four points. And then the Scything Talons. Is zero. And that's it. So just go for a flat 100 points. We're pretty lame, really. Just not much going for him there. Uh, we'll check out the other weapons. See what kind of best configuration you can go for. He's the Alpha Warrior. You can have one to hit rolls for all Hive, all Tyranid Warrior units of in six of any Primes. So that helps. If you're going to go for Warriors, then it's well worth thinking about taking a Prime. What's the best options here? Remember you're on two to and four attacks, so you could give them some pretty good weapons. So basic bioweapons. That's here. Simon Tan's spine fists, we'll cover these now. Uh, spine fists. Range 12 pistol, uh, and then strength three, zero AP, one damage. When a model fires this weapon, it makes a number of shots equal to its attacks, in which, in which case it's six, uh, four. So. Oh, that great. And that will cost two more a point. Okay, not very much at all. Uh, then monstrous uh, basic bio weapons, spine fist. So death spitter. We've seen the devourer. So we'll look at the Def uh, Spitter now, just check this out. Uh, Devourer, yeah, so we'll look at the Def Spitter. This is the better one, this is like the heavy bolter for the Tyranids. Uh, so the Def Spitter is uh, just five points. That's cheap, I'm very sure it used to be ten. No, it was eight. Alright, so it has come down in cost. That's a pretty good uh, reduction there. Salt free, range 24, strength five. AP minus one and one damage, yeah, and that's a, that's a better, much, much better weapon. Death Spitter, way, way better than all the others. Yeah, but uh, options better than Devourer. So I would go for, if I was going to go for shooting, I'd take Death Spitters. Uh, basic Bio Cannons. Let's just see if you've got access to that. 
Nope. Okay. So, um, melee bioweapons. So you go for rending claws. So regular rending claws, it's two points. And uh, that will cost... It's two points. Just checking the index, it's the same as it was. And uh, rending claws should uh, uh, strength to use AP minus one, one damage. If you roll a six to wound, it is AP minus four. So the rending claws are okay. That's kind of what upgrade you want to put on regular bog standard uh, unit choices like warriors, genes, tillers, and so on. You want something special for your character. Um, so bone swords is an option. AP minus two, strength for the user, and one damage. What on the bone swords can make an additional attack in the fight phase, so that's not bad. And they're two points. Cheap. Lash whip and bone sword, that's where you get to fight before you die. And that will cost two points. Okay. So that's those options available there. But pretty uh, not that not much really to be afraid of there with Tyranny Prime. If you really want to go for one. Uh, I would just go bone sword seem to be the best option. Uh, and then taking him for the bonus for warriors would be a main incentive for taking that HQ. So that's him. Turvagon is next here. So you're looking at 225 points. Uh, 217 it was an index, so a slight increase uh, for the cost of the Turvagon. Uh, you've got your stat line running here, so you're on weapon skill 4+, plus and ballistic skill 4+, plus, movement 8, strength 7, toughness 8, 14 wounds. Tough creature this one, 3 attacks, leadership 9, and a 3 plus save. Comes with massive Cybern Talons. Massive, not monstrous, massive Cybern Talons. So 225. Massive Cybern Talons. It's just 10. Okay, so that keeps that down. Worried that might have been a high amount. So 235 points at the moment. And then a massive crushing clause is 20. You've got to add another 20 onto that. So this is an expensive unit. And then Stinger Salvos as well, which is 8 points as well. So this is an expensive HQ. The Stinger Salvo is 24 assault 4, 24 inch range, strength 5, 8, minus 1, 1 damage. That's it. The Crushing Claws is times 2 strength, so strength 14, AP minus 3, and D6 damage, but you've got to subtract 1 from your hit roll. This is the problem. So you're on 4 plus to hit in combat, then you drop to 5 plus. 3 attacks. So really poor. Then massive Cybern Talons. A career roll hit rolls are 1, that's helpful. If the bearer has more than one pair of massive Cybern Talons, it can make an additional attack each time it fights. Ah, oh, right, okay, she doesn't have both. You're armed with one or the other. So I reckon I would definitely just keep the regular massive Cybern Talons. You know, you're on force to hit rerolling ones as opposed to five plus, and you have to pay double the amount of points for the crushing claws. So that's why I'd stick with that. You can take toxin sacs and adrenal glands. Shadow in the Warp, Synapse, Brood, progen Progenitor. Uh, you can reroll hit rolls of one in the shooting phase of friendly termagant units of in six. Uh, these units seem to be dedicated to their unit types and giving you a little incentive, a little bonus if you match them with their appropriate unit. So it's a slight benefit, but I mean, it's just gaunt firepower, which isn't that great anyway. Uh, synaptic Backlash is reduced to zero wounds, roll d6 before I move the model from the battlefield. Each friendly Tyranid Termagant unit within six of the Turvagon immediately suffers a number of mortal wounds equal to the result. It's just d6 per unit. You can spawn Termagants. The starting movement phase, Turvagon can spawn Termagants. If it does so, add ten to your army. Set them up wholly within six of the Turvagon and more than one inch from the enemy. All these models are armed with flesh borers. Alternatively, you can replace up to ten models lost earlier in the battle in an existing unit of Termagants from your army. There's within six of the Turvagon. 
Models placed in this way must be within six of the Turbogon and more than an inch from the enemy. You can only replace models armed with flesh borers. You cannot replace some of the models. If you cannot place some models, you lose the excess. You can attempt to manifest one psychic power and deny one. And it knows smite from one other power. I always like the Turbogon, but I'd be willing to drop it. It's not, it's not that amazing. But you never stop spawning Termagants here. It's just 10 a turn. So you, so you get the value of the points out of it. And if you keep it alive and keep churning out the Termagants, so that's a strength for sure. Great for sitting on top of objectives. You've got a nasty monster and you just flood the area with Termagants. It's great fun. So it's still rates, it's still good. So that's the Turbogon. Uh, Neuro Fruit next. So uh, he's 70 points for the Neurofrope. Yep, and he's not in the uh, index there. So no points comparison. So Neurofrope option there. Movement 5, weapon skill 4 plus, ballistic skill 3 plus, strength and toughness 4, 5 wounds, 1 attack, leadership 9 and 5 up save. He's armed with claws and teeth, which is strength user, 0 AP and 1 damage, so don't expect much from him at all. Shadow in the Warp and Synapse. He's a Synapse creature though. And a character? Yes. And can fly. Yeah, no, it's pretty good though. It can manifest two psychic powers. You know, you can hide him behind a wall of stuff and just smite with him. Uh, Spirit Leech. Each time a Neurofrope slays a model in the, with the smite psychic power, you can heal a wound to a friendly zone Zonefrope within six. Pretty good. You've got a free plus in one save. And then a warp siphon. You can roll ones when taking psychic tests for friendly zone for units within six of this model. So Neurofrope is pretty cool. Actually pretty helpful. Especially again if you're a fan of taking zone ropes. It's worthwhile having one of them nearby. So that's that one. Old one eye now, one of the characters. It was 140 points in the index. It's now 200 points. That's a massive increase. Massive increase here for old one eye uh, in the new codex. It's not all about points reductions with this new codex, there's some serious points increases here as well. So, old one eye then, uh, movement seven. So, he's a character, yeah. It's pretty helpful for hiding uh, with him, yeah. Pretty good, it's helpful for, for card effects. It's, uh, 200 points though, 3 plus weapon skill, that's helpful. Strength 7, toughness 7, 9 wounds, 5 attacks, this is really good, leadership 7, the free up save. He's armed with monstrous crushing claws, I suppose your upgrade is all included here, not having to pay anything on top. Monstrous crushing claws, which we've seen already, pretty deadly. It is minus 1 to the hit roll, but it'd be forced to hit with him. Uh, monstrous scythe in talons, and a fresher scythe, only 1 per army. So the fresher scythe, strength 4 even minus 1, 1 damage. Each time the bear fights, it can make one and only one attack with this weapon. You make d3 hit rolls for this attack instead of one. This is in addition to the bear's attack. So just a nice bonus there with that one, which is really good. Um, instinctive baby, immortal battery ram. When all one eye finishes a charge move, roll dice. 4 plus, it's uh, one enemy unit within an inch suffers d3 mortal wounds. In addition, add one to hit rolls, roll one eye in the fight phase if it charged on the same turn. It's a nice bonus there. That's really good. They're really helping the Carnifexes out here. A little incentive there for charging. Nice bonus if you charge, plus one on the hit rolls. Just making that a bit more reliable. The amount of times you played that Apocalypse game, charge a Carnifex in, and you're just missing with so many attacks. So I think Games Workshop have tried to address that. Alpha Lady, add one to the hit rolls in the fight phase of friendly Carnifex units within six of this model. So he grants bonuses to other Carnifexes. That is really good. Old one eyes brilliant. So, so now I reckon you could do a pretty competitive Carnifex based list with him. Berserk Rampage, each time you make a hit roll of six, except for the fresher side attacks, you can immediately make an additional attack with the same weapon against the same unit. These additional attacks do not confer extra attacks. Brilliant. So you get bonus attacks there as well. And then regeneration, at the beginning of each of your turns, you heal a wound. Whoa. So yeah, one eye, which is an easy model to put together. You just use, because you get the one eye, 
um, plastic head that does come in the Carnifex kit. So, now he is really good. Yeah, the old one is fine. And the character as well, which is extremely helpful. Difficult to kill him. Last unit. Another massive advantage of him, because he's nine wounds, there's no damage bracket here. So even if he's on his last wound, he gets the same amount of attacks, the same rate to hit as well. So, by the looks of it, with five attacks, you'll be on twos to hit if you use your silent hands and re-rolling ones. And he's brilliant. And this old one right seems to be a strong one. It sounds it's 200 points, sounds a lot, but you're not going to pay any more. And for that, you're getting a pretty decent um, combat unit. Yeah, so pretty good. All right, so uh, we're on to troops now. So two new warriors, which I've never really been a big fan of, but they're nice models. Uh, so they're 20 points a time. Uh, so they haven't changed in points cost. They're movement 6, 3 plus weapon skill, 4 plus ballistic skill, strength and toughness, 4, 3 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9 and 4 up. So, I mean, that stat line is pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, you have to take 3 of them. You can take another 3 or 6. And I'll do Simon Tans and Devourers, which is a lame, really, really poor combination. Um, so, Basic bio weapons. I'd swap those for Death Spitters. Isn't bad at all. Um, then you could go for things like bone swords and so on. That's better. You know, three attacks a time. It's not bad. Pretty durable unit. Um, so you can take flesh hooks as well. They are synapse. Um, so pretty helpful to bury those in amongst your force. Yeah, you know, just to complement. Uh, some other synapse creatures. Tuny Warriors are okay. Um, I'd say the better combination to go for them is the Bone Sword kind of option um, and the Death Spitters, I would say. That's those. Um, Gene Steelers, which have just become really good now. Massive incentive to take these. Uh, Gene Steelers were 10 points in the index and they have remained the same, I believe. Yeah, that's still 10 points. And you pay for your ending clause on top of that, which is 2 points. Uh, movement 8, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 4+, plus, strength for toughness 4, 1 wound, 3 attacks. Fantastic base number of attacks for them. Leadership 9 and 5 up save. Um, round of rending clause, which you have to pay for, which makes them 12 points. You get 10 of them for like 120 points. It's not bad. Uh, the rending clause then is always AP-1, which is really, really helpful. And then, if you do roll those sixes, because of all the attacks, you're bound to get some. It's AP minus four, so they just shred through stuff, shred through vehicles, no problem. Strength four, they're usually going to be wounding vehicles on a five plus, which is really helpful. Uh, any model may also have a pair of Simon Talons, which is a zero points cost for every four models in the unit. One model may have flesh hooks and or have an acid maw. The acid maw is strength use AP minus three. Nice. And that costs, instead of two points, the acid more costs zero. Interesting. And why would they give you that for nothing? Strange. Strange that. Yep. No, very interesting. Uh, flesh hooks is two. Let's just check your rending clause is two. So instead of rending claws, for zero points, acid more is brilliant. Maybe minus three. You'd have to mark, mark the models out somehow to signify they're armed with acid mores, um, because that is a well worth taking. Acid more, AP minus three. Really, really good. Uh, they've got the five plus in one. Fury of, flurry of claws. Genesis says they're four attacks instead of three, whilst there's ten or more models, so incentive there to take like 15, 20 in the unit. It's uh, five gene stealers, by the way. You can take five, ten, or fifteen, so max them out to units of twenty. Uh, they can charge even if they're advanced, which is massive. Um, so, correct me if I'm wrong, but if they come up from deep strike, if they follow a trigon up, uh, they can then advance and then charge, which is incredibly good. 
Extended carapaces, Gene Sitters of extended carapaces have a save characteristic of 4+, plus, but lose swift and deadly. Uh, models in the unit can take toxin sacks and or extended carapaces, so if you want to improve your save, you can go for that. And that is actually modelled, that is those plastic parts that you can add onto the shoulders to give them that uh, in the kit so that you, you get a bonus uh, for either of those options. I would probably keep the I'd probably keep the swift and deadly. It's so helpful to get into combat. Uh, so rules here, infestation. If your army includes any units of genesis, you can place up to four infestation nodes anywhere in your deployment zone when your army deploys. You can then set up any units of genesis lurking instead of setting them up on the battlefield. If an enemy model is over, ever within nine inches of an infestation node, the node is destroyed and removed from the battlefield. Whilst these are Whilst there are only friendly infestation nodes on the battlefield, this unit can stop lurking at the end of any of your movement phases. Set it up wholly within six of a friendly node. This infestation node is then removed from the battlefield. If this unit is still lurking, when the last friendly infestation node is removed, this unit is destroyed. You set up these little nodes, and then instead of having the models on the table, you know, to get shot up, maybe turn one, um, then you then start to deploy them when you're ready. There's a pretty good tactic out there that you could use. So any number of genesis, you can have four nodes. So you've got two units of genesis, you've still got the four nodes. You place them around, you can place them in areas where you think the opponent's not going to be able to stop you. And it just means that they can appear, and not just sit there in the open, uh, to be shot at if you're, you know, you're not going to go first in a game. So that is helpful. There's some little extra rules here for genesis. They, they've improved. They're, they're amazing. And then now they've got some little bonuses. Acid more infestation rules and the option to take extended carapaces. All looking very good indeed, so that is them. So very, very good. All right, so uh, termagants is next. Not gonna spend too much time on these. Um, they're probably gonna be the same, four points each. Uh, yeah, four points each, so no shift with them. Just the usual stat line, four plus weapon skill, ballistic skill. Uh, you can take up to 20 of them in total. Ground of Flesh Borers, which is Assault 1, range 12, strength 4, 0 AP and 1 damage. You can take Devourers or Spine Fists. Any model can do that. And all models in the unit can take Toxin Sacks or Dream Glands. Hail of, Living, Hail of Living Ammunition. If this unit contains 20 or more models, you can reroll wounds of 1 when it shoots. So nice for bulking your army out. Pretty tame. Pretty poor. Uh, Hormigants is at five points a time, and they have not changed down their five points as well in the index. So you can go for big units of, sorry, up to 30 size with these. You can take 10 and then up to additional 20, so it's 30. You go to units of 30 for these. If you do take big units, Hungering Swarm, if you've got 20 more models, you can reroll wounds at one when it fights again in combat. It's gonna be like 120 points to take 30 of them. It's very cheap for a massive horde. So great ability for Tyrants just to hoard the army out. Brilliant. Uh, the extra one damage is pretty good incentive there when you when you put that onto multiple models um, whenever the unit piles in and consolidates it can move up to six so that's bounding leap as they pile in on top of the uh, enemy so I'm just looking up toxin sacks for home guns it is two points a time Make them a fair bit more expensive. I don't know whether I'll bother with that. Um, but that option is there. It could be helpful. Calls multiple wounds, maybe like a vehicle, for example, and all the damage comes through is two damage. Loads of saves to make. You're going to double your effectiveness pretty much. So that is maybe an option. Uh, Ripper swarms, they are troops as well. And uh, that's 11 points a time. I haven't changed compared to the index. Just a low stat line, there's three wounds, four attacks, 
for them. Borrowers, during deployment you can set up a Ripper Swarm underground instead of on the battlefield. The end of your movement phase is they can tunnel up to the battlefield. Set them up anywhere that is more than 9 inches from the enemy. So never really been a big fan of those. Uh, they've got Spine Moors, range 6, pistol 4, strength 2, AP 0 and 1 damage. So nothing major for those just there. But nice lot of attacks. Maybe you could use them in some way. So that's Ripper Swarms. Just there. So onto Elite. That's the troops covered, which are all quite tame. Great for bulking out your army. Really, really good. Genius is the more deadly out of all of those. Uh, I'd be a fan of them. They, they, the points have come right down compared to 7th edition. So I think Genius Stillers is the way ahead if you want to go for more of a potent troop. Um, and then uh, we're on to Elites then now to see what the Tyrants have to offer. Alright, so uh, Tyrant Guard next. 35 points a time. They haven't changed in points cost. And they, you have to take three of them. You can take another three of them, so you can take it so up to six. They're under rending claws, that's two points a time, and seven times, which is zero, so they're cheap enough. Um, so, another rules for these. Anyone who may replace it seven times with uh, crushing claws, which for these is times two strength, so strength 10, AP minus three and D3 damage. It's minus one to hit. So, be on force to hit with them. Or you can go for Lash Whip and Bone Swords as well. All models in the unit may have Toxin Sacks and or Adrenal Glands. I'll probably just keep the rending claws with these. Um, Blind Rampage. If a friendly uh, Tuned Hive Tyrant is killed within six of this unit from the end of that turn, increase the attacks characteristic of each one of the unit by one for the rest of the battle. And Shield Wall. Roar a dice each time a friendly Hive Tyrant loses a wound whilst they're within three inches. And a two plus. A unit from this unit can intercept the hit. Hive Tyrant does not lose the wound, but this unit suffers a mortal wound. Okay, so you can gradually, gradually absorb the damage, and that's they're three wounds a time. Three of them is nine wounds to absorb. So they will do. They will do a good job of protecting a Hive Tyrant for about a hundred points. So worth it, I reckon. They can fight in their own right as well. Not too bad at all. So if you're running something like a Uh, hmm. Let's just check something here. The Swarm Lord. Yeah, has Hive Tyrant keyword, so they can protect him. That's what I was wondering. And that's what I would do. If I took a Swarm Lord, definitely would take the Hive Guard, uh, or the Tyrant Guard for them. The next option's uh, Hive Guard, which is their 18 points a time. Again, they haven't changed in points cost. So look at the weaponry for these. They are ballistic skill three plus, which is really good. Um, movement five, weapon skill four plus, three plus ballistic skill strength four, toughness five, three wounds, two attacks. This should be seven to four up save. So not as durable as tyrant guard, or as fast. But there are artillery options here. Any model replaces impaler cannon with a shock cannon. So, Impaler Cannons is 30 points a time, so looking at 48 points the model. Uh, and then a Shock Cannon is 21 points, so a fair bit cheaper. But, uh, okay. So you take three of them, you take an additional three. There's no bonus for them protecting uh, Hive Tyrants. And you can take Toxin Sacks and Adrenal Glands. So the Impaler Cannon, range 36, nice range, heavy 2, remember it frees to hit, but then if you move, then you're on minus to hit. So that's the disadvantage of your mobile army on the advance, trying to move in. Then there's that minus just there. Strength fate, AP minus 2 and D3 damage. This weapon can target units that are not visible to the bearer. In addition, units attacked by this weapon do not gain any bonus for cover. Shock Cannon is range 24, Assault D3, this is better if you're on the move. Strength 7, AP minus 1 and D3 damage. The target is a vehicle, you make a wound of a 4+, plus. The, the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to any other damage. If you make a wound of a 6, inflict D3 mortal wounds instead, so that's not a bad weapon. You know, take a you know, unit of 3 of them, 3 D3 shots, freeze to hit. It's not too bad, 
Still rate two units is more doing more damage in combat. So, but the sh those shooting options aren't too bad. It, notice in 8th edition, Tyranids are quite weak for shooting. These weapons are okay. But not utterly amazing, but they're alright. Not too bad. The shot cannon's pretty good for vehicles. So that's them. Uh, Lictors next. So, the Lictors, 41 points. Again, hasn't changed in points cost. Movement, 9. Very, very quick. Weapon skill 2 plus, very good. Ballistic skill 4 plus. Strength 6, which is really good. Toughness 4, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 9 to 5 up save. He's armed with flesh hooks, grasping talons, and rending claws. So we know, know all of these. Grasping talons is strength of the user, which is strength 6. AP minus 1 and 2 damage. It's not bad. Comedic skin, your opponent must subtract 1 from their hit rolls. Target this model. In addition, add two to any saving throws if you're in cover. And then Hidden Hunter, you can uh, deep strike basically nine inches away from the enemy. You reroll your charge distance on the turn that you arrive. So they're alright, lictors are okay. They're okay. You can't if you take one of them, you can't expect it to be to do too much. Um I mean, you, st you can't get close to 9 inches, which is a real shame. So, maybe for objective grabbing, you know, turning up anywhere on the battlefield and hiding in cover may well be an option. But the other disadvantage is you get plus 2 for your saving throws. You go into a building, your save turns from a 5 plus to a 3 plus, which still isn't that amazing. So, they're not that well protected. So, lictors, mm, not really, I don't think they're that strong. Uh, Def Leaper. Next, this might be the option to go for. This one's significantly better. Uh, Def Leaper is 90 points. It hasn't changed in points cost. Movement 9, weapon skill 2 plus, which is the same. It's all the same here, except that you get 6 wounds instead of 4. You get an extra attack for 4 wounds, leadership 10 to 5 up. So, um, so just the extra attack. Superior comedic skin, your opponent must subtract two from their hit rolls. Makes them quite hard to get to. And you get two for your saving throws in cover. It's after me. At the start of the first battle round, before the battle begins, pick a character from the opposing army. You can reroll hit and wound rolls in the fight phase for any of Death Leaper's attacks that target that character. It's quite hard to pull that off. Characters usually going to be hidden somewhere in a vehicle, buried away. Your opponent knows you're going to be after him, and so. Makes things difficult. And then you hidden hunter, you still got him more than nine inches away. So it's quite hard to get that one exactly right. So no, I wouldn't really rate Death Leaper either. Nice models though, Lictors are fantastic um, idea behind them, but just not that strong, I don't think. Right, then you've got zone throats, which is your psychic ability here. They're uh, 40 points a time. They're armed with claws and teeth, so it's a flat 40 points. You can have that 3 plus in one save. They've got 3 wounds to absorb, 5 up save though, but they, the 3 plus in one. Uh, warp blast power, which I'll cover in just a moment. Claws and teeth, nothing significant there. Okay, so when this unit manifests the smite to psychic power, it affects the closest visible enemy unit within 24 instead of 18. In addition, it inflicts an additional D3 mortal wounds on that enemy unit if this unit contains four or five zone ropes or additional three mortal wounds if it contains six. So some nasty smite available from them, but you know 40 points times six is gonna be a big unit. Yeah and psychic powers is pretty much all they do. Not gonna expect much else from them. Uh, you can attempt to manifest one psychic power and attempt to deny one. So that's just gonna be a smite. Oh, if you've got four or more in the unit, you can manifest two. Attempt to deny one. If you know smite, uh, it's one smite, it's smite, and uh, one other psychic power. When manifesting or denying a psychic power with a zone for a unit, first select a model in the unit, measure of range, visibility, and so on. If this unit suffers perils, it suffers D3 mortal wounds, as described in the core rules. But units within six will only suffer damage if the perils of the warp causes the last model in the zone for a unit to be slain. So that's that. Yeah, they're okay. 
I think it's a lot of points just to gain a pretty effective smite. And the smite has to go off against the nearest enemy unit, which may not always be the target you want, so wouldn't really be a fan of them. Uh, the Malice Scepter next. So, Malice Scepter then. 162 points. Um, yeah, exactly the same in the index. Movement 7. So, uh, okay, this is interesting. Psychic overload, we'll cover that in just a moment. Uh, so, uh, weapon skill 4 plus usually, strength 7. Toughness 7, 12 wounds, 3 attacks. Uh, leadership 9 and 3 up, so. It's armed with massive side and talents. So it's only three attacks though, and only fours to hit. And it drops there on the damage, so you're not going to expect too much from it. Um, there, the ball load is d6 damage, it's pretty good. Psychic overload then. Instead of manifesting any psychic powers in psychic phase, a uh, Maliceptor can unleash brain bursting psychic tendrils. If it does so, roll a dice for each enemy unit within six from, to a maximum number of units shown on the damage table above. Right, so. Um, uh, on a full stat line, you're on six units, then you drop down to three units, then it's D3. On a two plus, you deal out one mortal wound to that unit. On a six, it's three mortal wounds. You get four plus invun save, you can attempt to manifest two psychic powers and attempt to deny one. Deny two psychic powers. It's a bit of a smite machine, really. It's interesting, unit type. It's when you plunge into the heart of the opponent. Opponent's force, yeah, yeah, it's like, sounds okay. The model's quite nice, but not that amazing, really. Okay, so that's the Malice Scepter. Again, if you disagree, leave it in the comments section. If you think some of the units I've said are quite weak and you think they're good, and leave that in the comments section, and give you reasons what combinations seem to work really well, because there's loads of different ways you can do combinations in 8th edition now enhancements and so on. Some of the stratagems that we'll see later on maybe can really enhance some of the units as well, so there's, there's that to bear in mind also. Uh, it's a Venom Throat, which I was a fan of. Just a bit granting that it used to be shrouded to special law in 7th edition, uh, but now it works in a different way uh, for 8th edition. But you use them to protect your force, see how effective they are. So, Venom Throat, so 30 points a time, they were 25, so more expensive now. Just a standard stat line, really. Movement 5, weapon skill, blizzard skill 4 plus, strength 4, toughness 4, 3 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 5 and 5 up, so you not expect too much. You have to take 3 of them. So that's 90 points straight away. Yep. So, Toxic Lashes shooting is range 6, assault 2. Strength for the user, which is 4, AP 0, and then D3 damage. You can find them with an inch, so um, it's like a pistol weapon, and you can reroll wounds. Then in melee, strength for the user at 0, D3 damage, you can reroll foul wounds to this weapon, and then if the enemy has units that have charged or they have a similar ability, then alternate choosing units to fight with, starting with the player whose turn is taking place. Okay. So Toxic Miasma, at the end of the fight phase, roll a d6 for each enemy unit within an inch of any Venom ropes. On 5+, plus, you take a Mortal Wind. So they're quite toxic to be nearby, but... Pretty tame. Shrouding Spores, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls made for ranged weapons that target units, excluding monsters. Oh, no. While serving 6 inches of any uh, Venom ropes. In addition, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls made for ranged weapons that target monsters, while serving 6 of any... Uh, venom for rope units that contain three or more models. Right, so you have to take a bigger unit to create a bigger cloud. I suppose it makes sense. Increase the range of both of these effects to nine, whilst there's six models. So an incentive there to take a big mob of them. So you're looking to protect monsters. You've got to take three or more. You can go for big blobs of them. Is it worth that? just to get the minus one to hit. This is a tough choice. Not sure if I'll continue using them or not. You know, maybe sometimes you can go for such speed with your army, 
such overwhelming attack that you don't need to worry about them. You know, you've got one turn exposure and then you're in. That's the kind of aim I'd go for, so faster units play it that way, so that's the kind of idea I'd, I'd go for there. Uh, but that's Venom Thropes, Pyrovores next. Um, so they are... Look, 38 points each. They were 23. Ouch, they have gone up quite significantly. Uh, movement 5, weapon skill, ballistic skill 4 plus, strength 5, toughness 4, 4 wins, 2 attacks, leadership 5 and 4 up save. So, you take up to 3 of them. Each model is armed with a flame spurt and acid maul. The acid maul we know it's AP minus 3, so that's not bad. Um, the flame spurt then, range 10, assault D6, strength 5, AP minus 1, it's auto hits, it's a heavy flamer. It's a 10 inch range heavy flamer. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, you've got your acid more in combat as well. Does that seem okay? Um, the acid more is zero. And the flame spurt zero as well. So pretty cheap really. Not too bad. Um, acid blood. Each time this model loses a wound in the fight phase or a dice on six causes a mortal wound. Volatile. When a pyrovore is slain or a dice on a 4 plus, it bursts in a shower of acid at the nearest enemy unit within 3 inches, suffers a mortal wound. So there's that as well, Volatile. Interesting unit, that. Hmm. Yeah, not bad. Pretty good for taking on hordes and things. Yeah, you chuck out all those shots, and then if you're charged, Get the same on Overwatch, so interesting. I've never taken them, but they seem okay. About 100 points. So the Horror Specs next. Horror Specs, Horror Specs. Uh, okay, so. Uh, is 198 points. It was 267. Ooh, significant drop in cost. Movement 7. Step line across here, your top bracket is weapon skill and ballistic skill 4 plus, strength 7, toughness 8, 13 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 6, and 3 up save. Uh, it's armed with grasping tongue, a ravenous maw, and shoveling claws. Shoveling claws is 0. Uh, then you get uh, grasping tongue. is here is a zero and then a ravenous more is zero right so not paying out anymore it's about 200 points in so the grasping tongues are shooting weapon assault one range 12 strength six eight minus three and d3 damage this weapon could be fired within an inch of the enemy unit and can target enemy units within an inch of friendly units in addition when a model is slain by this weapon the horror spec Horospex regains a lost wound. Ravenous Maw is AP minus one, strength for the user, D3 damage. Make D3 hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon instead of one. So you can generate a fair amount of attacks with that one. Shoveling Claws is times two strength from strength 14, AP minus three and D6 damage. That's pretty nasty. Pretty nasty. Um, instinctive behavior, acid blood. Each time this model loses a wound, or a dice on a six, it causes a mortal wound. Friends of Death Rose, it's reduced to zero wounds, causes three mortal wounds within three inches on a six, two units. And then Rapacious Hunger, each time it slays an enemy model with its ravenous maw, it can immediately make an extra attack with its shoveling claws. <laughs> In addition, at the end of the fight phase, which Horror Specs slew any, any models with its ravenous maw, it regains one wound lost. Early in the battle. So interesting, quite a fun unit to play with that one. And pretty deadly. Yeah, four attacks isn't bad. So for, for instance, Ravenous Maw, you know, four D3 attacks. So but not yeah, and then D3 damage a time, that's okay. Grasping tongue as well, and the shoving claws. There's no minus to hit with them. You know, D6, potentially, yeah, 4D6 damage. So, it's not a bad unit, that one. 
it's 200 points so it's, it's expensive enough um, but it's not bad in all respects next one is gargoyles we're on fast attack now I really love the old formation where you could take a wing type tyrant like that and surround him with these I thought it was amazing just as we came to the close of 7th edition and we can't really do that now as such which is a shame used to, you know they, they used to protect him and then take the wounds so but anyway gargoyles will be cheap enough in points uh, they I doubt they've changed in points cost six points a time and yet they're the same in uh, the index they move 12 four plus five skill ballistic skill strength and toughness three just one wound one attack Leadership 5 and a 6 up save. You can get up to units of 30 of them. Blinding Venom in melee is strength 3, AP 0, 1 damage. If you suffer any unsafe wounds in this weapon, your opponent must subtract 1 from hit rolls for that unit until the end of the turn. And then armed with flesh borers. If you've got more than 20 of them, you are wounds when it shoots. And then swooping assault, you can deep strike down as long as you're more than 9 inches away. So, nothing spectacular about them. Uh, but pretty cheap to take those. You know, 20 of them, which would look quite a presence on the battlefield, just 120 points. So that is those. So, uh, Ravenous next, one of my favourites. I always liked using these. We'll see how good they are. So, uh, Ravenous then, there are 23 points in the index. They're the same, 23 points. The Death Spitters have come down, nine points. Uh, to make them a bit cheaper if you go for that option. The movement 12, fantastic speed. Weapon skill 3 plus, ballistic skill 4 plus, strength up is 4 free wounds. 4 attacks, fantastic base amount of attacks, leadership 5 and a 5 up save. You take 3 of them, you can go all the way up to another 6. 2 pairs of side and 10, which is no extra, um, but you can go 4. Any model may place a pair of side and 10s of rending claws, which is what I'd go for, and then any model may have uh, spine fists. A Devourer or a Death Spitter, which is what I would go for. I'd go for Death Spitter and Rending Claws, which is 10 points basically. Death from below. During deployment, you can set up a Ravener unit underground instead of placing it on the battlefield. At the end of your movement phases, the Raveners can burrow to the surface. You set them up more than 9 inches away. So nice, you can keep them away from trouble, keep them off the table, bring them on when you need them, and then they're quick. So I really like them. I do like them. Yeah, the save's poor, but they've got three wounds. The toughness four. They can sort of absorb a fair amount of damage. So that's Ravenous. Just they're not utterly amazing, but uh, you know, a mob of six of them at least would be deadly enough, and you'd be looking at about 190 odd points for that. So that's those. Um, the Red Terror here is 75 points hasn't changed in points cost basically it's the same as above toughness has increased strength has increased to five six wounds to save three four attacks the same uh, four up save though leadership seven comes with a pincer tail prehensile pincer tail which we've seen earlier on and the side two pairs of side and tens death from below usual uh, Rules, swallow hole. If four or more red terror side and tens attacks hit the same unit, instead of causing damage normally, it can attempt to swallow a victim whole on a d6. Roll d6. If the result is equal to a higher than the highest wounds characteristic of the unit, one model from that unit is slain. Feeding frenzy. You can have one to hit rolls in the fight phase for friendly ravener units of in six. Right, so there is the bonus for taking him with raveners. Put don't think I'd bother for him. Uh, so, uh, Mucoloid Mucolid Spores is next. 20 points a time. No change from the index. So, just a low stat line here. Uh, three wounds for them. Um, you can take one of them, you can take another up to two more. So float down, uh, you've got to be more than 12 inches away from enemy units. Floating death, uh, it explodes if it is within 3 inches of enemy units at the end 
of any charge phase. Each time uh, the spore explodes or a D6 on a 1 it fails to inflict any harm. 2 to 5 it inflicts D3 mortal wounds. Nice. On a 6 it's D6 mortal wounds. And you then remove it from play. Um, yeah, no, it's not bad. But you can't land the charge. Well, unless you're on double six, which is very difficult. Living bombs. Muckleyard spores automatically pass morale tests. Furthermore, uh, the discount of the purposes of victory conditions. Their destruction never awards victory points. They do not count towards the number of models controlling an the objective. They do not count when determining if a player has any models left on the battlefield. If you're playing a match to play game, the creation of new Muckleyard spores, spores by another unit uh, is free, and the Muckleyard spores points costs does not come out of your pool of reinforcement points. Okay, so that's that. But, yeah, damage enough could cause trouble. Yeah, but you'd have to land them and then keep them alive. Because they're not really going to do much damage on the turn they land. Uh, and then they're movement free. Oh no, they're so slow. Very slow. Doesn't really rate them. Too slow. Spore mines, 3 inch move for them as well. 1 1 1 1 for the stat line, leadership 10. Uh, living bombs, same rules. Float down, floating death, same rules for them. God, I mean, look at this. The save is a 7 plus, by the way. <laughs> it's just, you have to take 3 of them. You can take an additional 6. But the floating death rule, it remains the same. Yeah. Two to five is one. No, sorry. Two to five is one mortal wound. If you're on a six, it's D three. It's just less of an impact for those. Let's see how much they are. Spore mines. Yeah, they're ten points a time. Quite expensive, really. Bound to get shot to bits. And there's no other bonuses there. So probably won't bother with those. Exocrine. Right, I do have this model. Always been a fan of its shooting. One of the better shooting weapons that the Terriers have available. You'll see that here in just a moment. I wonder if it's come down in cost. So it was 150. It is now 216. Oh no. <laughs> it's gone up by about 25% increase. Massive points increase. Okay, so. Bioplasmic Cannon is zero, so you're not paying up for that. And Powerful Limbs, you won't pay up for that either, I very much doubt. It's not even on here. Oh, it is zero. Okay, so it's a flat uh, rate just there. Uh, right, okay. So I'm saying the points have gone up. I'm just looking at the index here. You had to pay 66 points for the Bioplasmic Cannon, which means it's the same. So the uh, points cost has not increased at all, which is good news. Movement 6, uh, on the stat line here, it's uh, on the top row, it's 4 plus uh, weapons complicity skill, 3 attacks, leadership 7, toughness 8, 12 wins, 3 up save, leadership 6. So the bioplasmic cannon, range 36, nice range, heavy 6, so fantastically reliable. Always going to get those 6 shots. Strength 7, nice, most vehicles, 4 plus to wind. AP minus 3. Very good indeed. And then two damage, always guaranteed two damage come through. The powerful limbs are AP minus one, two damage. Wouldn't expect too much from it in combat. So symbiotic targeting. If this model does not move, you can add one to your hit rolls in the shooting phase. If you do so, it cannot charge in the same turn. Right, so if you sit there, you'll freeze to hit. So you get like four out of six hits. Weapon beast. If it does not move, again, you can shoot all weapons twice. So all of a sudden you get 12 shots. That makes it good. And then Death Rose. So I do like the Exocrine. It's one of the better pieces uh, of Tyranid artillery. I do like that. Uh, the Tyranifex is next. So uh, we are looking at 181 points. It's 174 points in the index. Yeah, so some of those other units I called out earlier on, saying that they'd gone up in points cost. It may be that Games Workshop have merged the cost of their shooting weaponry or melee weaponry with the cost of the model, so you have to cross-reference that uh, in the book. But uh, the Terranifex here, Moon 6, weapon skill 4+, plus, 
Then on the stat line, ballistic skill 4 plus, strength 7 to 4 attacks. Toughness 8, 14 wounds, loads of wounds. Leadership 7 to 3 up save. Armed with powerful limbs, just as above. It's got acid spray. It's actually really good. Acid spray is fantastic. Um, and it can also fire stinger salvos. So for acid spray, you're paying 25 points. You're basically getting 2d6 heavy, range 18, strength user, AP minus 1, d3 damage a time. It's auto hits on the target. So you're getting about 7 hits. And that is strength, which is strength 7. It's like a super flame. Actually, pretty good. Um, right, so you can replace that with a flesh bore, a hive, or a rupture cannon. The rupture cannon looks the most impressive, I think. Um, which is here, 49 points for that. Or you can go for the flesh borer high, which I think is quite poor. 15 points for that. Yeah, so you not expect too much from that. Flesh borer high, heavy 20, range 18, strength 5, maybe 0, and 1 damage. The rupture cannon. Range 48, heavy 3, so you're guaranteed to get the free shots. That's really good. It's strength 10, AP minus 3 and D6 damage. That's a decent, that's a really good shooting weapon. Yep. Oh wow. All of a sudden the turn effects has got really good. Yeah, this is really good. Right, this model may have toxin sacs and or adrenal glands. I just want to check something here. Um, I just want to go to here. Any wounds of a six in the fight phase? No, it's all right. I was just checking wonder if you get the bonus when you shoot, but you don't. So that's that. Um, and then here, biotank. This model does not suffer the penalty to its hit rolls for moving and firing heavy weapons. If you are on the move, there's no minus. You're just going to get forced to hit three shots. Um, so that's deadly enough. You do get Weapon Beast. If you don't move, you can fire your weapons twice. All of a sudden, you're going to get six shots. Strength 10 AP minus 3 D6 damage. It's like a Tyranid Predator. Annihilator. It's not bad. And Strength 10, you're going to be a freeze to wound most vehicles. Pretty much every vehicle. Yep. So, Terran Effects is good. No, I, I, I rate this one here. This is one to look out for. It really is. That's not bad at all. You, the only thing to worry about is your ballistic skill will drop down to 5 plus um, if you lose half your wounds. If you're 7 or wounds or less, so be careful with that. Um, if you drop to your last few wounds, you still stay on a 5 plus. Yeah, but the great thing about this, it's not heavy D3, it's heavy 3, you're always guaranteed your free shots. Which means you should get a hit every turn, no matter what your ballistic score is. You one hit turn, freeze to wound, you can knock the armor right down with minus 3 and then D6 damage. You know, on a good round of shooting and you get your free hits. Strength 10 for minus 3, you know, cause trouble. No, and there might be times, there's bound to be times, your Tyrion army's advancing and you've got to try and take something out. You know, key vehicle of some kind, you could take that. So the model looks fantastic, and the rupture cannon, the big long cannon, looks particularly good. So I like the terrain effects. I, I rate that. Of all the shooting options, that's one of the good ones there for the Tyranids. Yeah, so if you had two of them, suddenly you've got some heavy artillery in your army available. Yeah, and they can fight themselves, not bad either. So. Uh, both of those I like. Uh, so, Biovores next. Uh, 36 points a time. There were 24, but that might be an amalgamation of uh, weaponry. Uh, 5 plus, uh, 5 inch move, weapon skill, ballistic skill 4 plus, strength and toughness 4, 4 wins, 2 attacks, leadership 5 and 4 up save. You have to take one of them, you can take an additional 2. And the spore mine launcher, which we've seen the spore mines from earlier on. Um, each time a spore mine la launcher hits the target, roll d6 and find out how much damage is inflicted on the target. 
are one. Spawn one fails to inflict any harm. Two to five, that's the usual. Uh, six or a six is D3. Mortal wins. Each time you miss, you set up a single spawn one model anywhere within six of the target unit and more than three inches from any enemy model. If the spawn mine cannot be placed, it is destroyed. This then follows the rules for spawn mines. It's part of the army. I think it's fun. They are fun. So Biovore, let's just have a look. It's 36 points, and then you look for a spawn mine launcher is zero. Yeah, no. The range is fantastic, range 48. Okay. No, it's fun. I had fun with those. A couple of batteries of them set up and just target whatever you want. You know, no matter how good you are, no matter how tough your arm, armor is, how much how much decent armor save you have, what decent invun save you have, you're just gonna be mortal wins coming through from that. Your ballistic skill is four plus. There's half a chance you're gonna get hit if you don't move. And if you miss, then you create trouble for your opponent anyway. So yeah, no, they, they seem fun. Um, I've never really gone down too much fire support because I go more for monstrous uh, melee type attacks uh, and units. But uh, Biovore seem fun, quite cheap. So Toxicrine is next. Love the model. Seriously considering getting one, but we'll take a look at the rules uh, for this one. This big spaghetti monster. So uh, Toxicrine, Toxicrine, 157 points. Was 135, but it's probably no extra points to uh, pay here. So uh, choking spores is at zero. Um, then massive toxic lashes zero M as well. Okay. So movement eight is quick enough. Weapon skill of three plus to start off with. Ballistic skill four plus. Strength seven. Toughness seven. 12 wins. Six attacks with your highest stat line. Leadership seven to three up, so it's a pretty good stat line. So choking spores is range 12, assault d6, strength three, AP zero, d3 damage. You agree all wound rolls this weapon. In addition, units attacked by this weapon do not gain bonuses for cover. The massive toxic lashes for shooting is range eight, assault d6, strength for the user, which is seven, uh, and the high bracket, minus two damage and d3. Minus two AP and then D3 damage. You can fire it like a pistol and you can reroll wounds. Pretty good. Not bad at all. Just the random worry about the random, it's assault D6 and you could get just get one shot, could get six. Then in combat, strength of the user, which is seven. AP minus two and D3 damage, you can reroll wounds. And uh, you get to. Uh, model under this weapon always fights first, even if it didn't charge. If the enemy has a similar ability, then it alternates to choosing units, starting with the player whose turn it is. Okay. So it's that. It's okay in combat. Then it has acid blood. Each time it loses a wound, or a d6. On a 6, the unit that inflicted the damage suffers a mortal wound. And this is in combat, to be in close combat. Hypertoxic miasma. At the end of the fight phase, roll a d6 for each enemy model within an inch or six, it suffers a mortal wound. Okay, so great to charge into hordes for larger units. You know, glad, gladly plunge them into a unit of tactical marines. And then friends of death rows. So, he's okay. 157 is cheap enough, he's quite nicely below 200 points. So, Toxicrine's okay. So it's utterly amazing, but it's not bad at all. And again, you're fascinated to see what kind of bonuses and tweaks and combinations you can do with the special rules that come later that you can start to uh, enhance certain units using certain stratagems and traits and so on. That's the Toxic Prime. So Carnifex is, and Games Workshop have really spread these out now. There's different types to choose from, and they've improved Carnifexes, I think, to some degree. This is a heavy support, by the way, which have been on for a fair while. All of these here, Exocrine, Terrain Effects, Toxocrine, Biovores, are all heavy support. So, uh, Carnifex is them. 
So the standard car effects is 67 points, which is the same as it was in the index. Now you get movement 7. So quick enough, weapon scum, six skill, 4 plus strength 6, toughness 7, 8 wounds, that's decent. Stat line, 4 attacks, leadership 6 and a free up save. Um, you can take one Kyvex and include up to an additional two. You're armed with two pairs of monstrous Simon Tans. So monstrous Simon Tans then. You can reroll hit rolls of one for this weapon. If there's more than one pair of monstrous Simon Tans, it makes additional attack. So you know you're going to be on five attacks at fours to hit rerolling once. You're going to get a couple of hits to come through. It's okay. To take on a vehicle and reduce damage, you want two or three of them. Let's just say monstrous scything talons for Carnifex is 14. So 14 plus 67. Uh, two pairs. It's 15. That's just a point more. Very, very cheap. 70, 80, 80 odd points gets you a pretty good monstrous creature. Yep. No, I'm just checking in the index as well. I know the monstrous Simon Town pair has dropped. It was 20, it's now 15. So they're coming in at a discounted rate here, which is pretty good. So that's the standard loadout, which is not bad. You know, a pair of them, two of them running around. That's 16 wounds to get through. Whoa. The other great thing about Kyle FX is a lot going for them. There's no damage bracket here. You know, so you've got one wound left and you're in combat, you're still going to fight at the same rate. So, I, I maybe could work on getting Carnifexes back in. So, uh, any model may replace its monstrous Simon Tans with an item from the monstrous Bio Cannons. So, there's that option there. Uh, so, we've uh, covered these already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heavy Venom can maybe it might be an option to go for. 25 points, pretty good gun platform. But if you move, there's that. You're only on force to hit, so there's that. Uh, so we've covered that already. Any model may replace both pairs of monstrous sometimes two items from monstrous bio cannons. In case you can double up with your shooting. Any model may replace one of its pairs of monstrous sometimes with monstrous crushing claws. Problem with that is it's minus one to hit. This is the problem. So we have five to hit in combat, which is probably not that great. Mm, this is the downside of these. So a much more reliable option is to take the monstrous side and turn two pairs. And not just take one kind of X expected to deal with a vehicle, take a pair of them at least. Maybe take a unit of three, one to die on the way in, two to make it in against the target, that kind of philosophy. Uh, you may replace the monstrous Simon Tans with monstrous crushing claws, you may take adrenal glands, toxin sex. Any model may have one of the following. See, there's your time to take toxin sex to get that extra damage. But that's quite unlikely. You probably wouldn't bother. Any model may have one of the following bioplasma, enhanced senses, a monstrous monstrous acid maw or tusks. This is interesting. Okay, so Bioplasma is nine points. Assault range twelve, assault D3, strength seven, AP minus three and one damage. It's not too bad, but again you're on force to hit. So that's an option. Nine points. But yeah, you cut some models down with that. And again if you've got a brood of like three of them. All of a sudden you can bring some models down with that. Probably worth it. Then enhanced senses. Um, biomorphs, here we go. 10 points. It has ballistic skill 3 plus. Oh wow. Ooh, now this is getting better. So now you can fire pretty reliably uh, with the heavier weapons. So brilliant, really, really good. Uh, they've got the head to match that the one with the, the Donny Darko style uh, head on him. Then 
we are looking at uh, monstrous acid moor. Monstrous acid moor is 10 points. Let's see what this does. A monstrous acid moor is uh, strength of the user AP minus 5 and D3 damage. That's horrid. Horrid weaponry. No minus to hit with him. Plenty of options now for these. Really good. And then tusks. Okay. So tusks is eight points. Yeah, so tusks, eight points is here. You can have one to the attack's characteristic of kind effects of tusks in the fight phase if it charged in the preceding charge phase. So ten points an extra attack. Hmm. Maybe worth it. You get extra attack if you charge. Five attacks on the charge. Give it tusks plus your uh, monstrous side and tans. All of a sudden you're on six attacks. That's more like it. Yep. And rerolling ones. Now all of a sudden kind of effects are pretty good. They really have seemed to have improved these. Yep. So too bad at all. Um, there's more options, loads of options now for Carnifexes kind of that are way, way better than they were. Uh, anyone who may have a fresher scythe or a bone mace. So the fresher scythe is 7. You get strength 4, AP minus 1, 1 damage. Each time you fight, you can make 1 uh, attack, but you get D3 hits. So, yeah, maybe worth that. So all of a sudden, you can really ramp up the number of attacks you're getting. Worth doing, I think. Yeah, so uh, that is the fresher scythe. Only seven points, yeah, probably worth that. And then, uh, or you can take a bone mace, which is only two points. And that gives you, oh. What, that's incredible. Just, just make sure we've got this right. A bone mace is two points. And for that, you get an extra attack. It comes in at strength eight, AP minus one and D3 damage. And it's an extra attack on top of your usual attacks. It's bone mace, fantastic. Really good. So now take that. Um, and then the model may take spine banks or spore cysts. So uh, spine, spine banks. Yeah, uh, two points for spine banks. And that gets you strength, uh, range six, salt four, strength five, AP zero, one damage. This weapon could be five of an inch of enemy models. Well, not bad. Add that on top. You know, for, for paint, you know, it's very small amounts of points. Really enhance the kind of effects now. Uh, spore cysts. Is, is over here. Ten points for that. Uh, your opponent must subtract one from their hit rolls for range weapons that target kind of effects of spore cysts. This is not cumulative for the penalties to hit rolls incurred from shrouding spores ability. So spore cysts, fantastic minus one to hit as well. Wow, really, really good. Okay, and then you may have chitin fawns. Or chitin, 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 fawns is five points. Which is here. At the end of your fight phase, roll d6 for each enemy unit within an inch. On a six, it's a mortal wind. Each enemy unit, not really. <laughs> they probably won't bother with that. It's not, if it was enemy models, fantastic, but it's not as per unit. But no, there's some amazing combinations you can do with those kind of fixes now. They really are. I've made a comeback in the codex. Cheap, uh, but with some... A stack of abilities, a stack of enhancements you can give them. You can make them great for shooting um, and great for combat as well. No, and then don't take one. I'd say don't take one and expect to do amazing stuff. Take two at least. Three of them if you're going to be really serious. Um, and you can expect them to do pretty good. So I suppose that they have to hang around with each other, I'm guessing, if you're taking them in the same unit. It doesn't say you can split them up. Oh, here it is. The first time this unit is set up on the battlefield, all of its models must be replaced within six of each other. From that point onwards, you're separate. Okay. Living battering ram. When you finish a charge, move roll dice four plus. 
uh, one enemy unit within an inch suffers mortal wound. In addition, add one to all hit rolls in the fight phase. Fantastic. Pretty, really good. Yep, so these are all good. I mean, you can go for like, um, take one of these, give them two monstrous Simon Talons, give them tusks, give them the bone mace, and all of a sudden you've got tons of attacks. A reliable hits coming through. So, really, really good. Pretty cheap as well. Okay, so card effects is then you can then go for a Screamer Killer combination uh, just here, which is fascinating. Screamer Killer, the 90 points time, one to three in the unit. They come with two pairs of monstrous Simon Talons. Uh, stat line is the same, yes. They come with Bioplasmic Scream. Which is zero points solely built into the cost. Which is assault D6, strength seven, AP minus four and one damage. It's range eighteen. So pretty deadly. And again, if you take a brood of them, like three of them, all of a sudden you've got three D6 shots, strength seven, AP minus four. Horrid. Monster your sign turns, and you can take spore cysts. Usual rules, living battering ram, monstrous brood, spore cysts, terrifying. Your opponent must add one to any morale tests for units within eight of screamer killers. Yeah, it's an option just there. Okay, so that's another type you can go for. And would you believe it, another type here, Fawn Backs. They start off at 70 points. Each is armed with a pair of monstrous Sontans, two Devourers with Brain Leech Worms and Kitten Kitten Fawns. It's got the ability to cause mortal wounds. Let's have a look here. Two devourers and brain leech worms. So loads of shots. But you can go for you can take two death spitters of slime and maggots. So you end up with, yeah, that's not bad enemy shooting option there, range 24, assault three strength, seven, eight minus one, one damage. Just there. Or tons of shots, assault six. You times this by two, and um, because you can take two of them uh, here. And you've got huge upgrades. These just come, the only difference is Vicious Hunter. Enemy infantry units never gain any bonus to their same throws being cover for attacks made by a form back. Okay, so another option available. Just there. Fascinating how Games Workshop have. They've seen the issue there with Carnifexes and they've uh, just thrown in some loads of bonuses for them. And you can really configure them to how you want, which is fantastic. And there are some great combinations here for these. Really, really good. So the Morlock, one of my favorite models. And the Warlock is 104 points. Hasn't changed. Stat line then, the top line is uh, movement 9, weapon skill 4 plus, strength 6, toughness 6, 12 wins, attacks 7. Unbelievable. Uh, leadership 7, free up save. Comes with a prehensile tower, which is the extra attack now, not doesn't replace one of the attacks. Three pairs of side and talons. So you're on your re you're getting the extra attacks, you're down on eight attacks, re-rolling ones. Pretty good. You got dis distensible jaws. Let's just get this right here, distensible jaws. That's zero. Prehensile pincer. Zero. Simon tens. And zero. So he's cheap. He's cheap. Now uh, you can take a biostatic rattle or a toxin spike. So the biostatic rattle is zero. And the toxin spike is one point. The rattle is AP minus one. Each time you fight, you can make one uh, attack with this weapon in addition to the pair of attacks. If the unit suffers any unsaved wounds from this weapon, add one to the marrow tests they take to the end of the turn. Uh, the prehensile tower we know about, the toxin spike is strength one, AP zero, D3 damage. Each time it fights, make one uh, attack with this weapon. Uh, it always wins on two plus. And D3 damage, not bad. Toxin spikes, nasty enough. Simon turns and then this uh, distensible jaws. 
Each time the bear fights, one and only one of its attacks may be made with this weapon. Right, so uh, you just get one attack. You're on force to hit. It's AP minus three, strength for the user, and D6 damage. So, yeah, it kind of makes sense they've done that. This matches the style of play for that unit. Uh, so then you've got Terror from the Deep. During deployment, you can set up the Morlock Underground instead of placing it on the battlefield. Uh, it pops up, it has to be more than one inch away from enemy models, more than six from any other Morlocks set up in this way. Or D6 for each enemy unit within two. Of it, on a one, you escape, two to three, it suffers a mortal wound, four to five, it's D3 mortal wounds, and on a six, it's three mortal wounds. The Morlock cannot charge in the same turn. I love bringing it up from the deep, it's a fantastic distraction for the opponent. It's loads of wounds for them to get through. It can fight pretty good in combat. Uh, and this Terror from the Deep I think is fantastic. You can then borrow, perfect ambush for isolated units, say your opponent's got a heavy weapons team somewhere or something that's quite hard to reach. Just bring them up exactly where you want. Borrow so you can disappear down and then death throws. So, I'm a big fan of the more lovely model. Not bad in the game, pretty cheap. 100 up points. Really it is an absolute bargain. So that's him. Trigons, which has improved. Edition. So the Trigon is 108 points. It was 103. The Prime is 128. It's 138 here. So not much difference. The points costs. The regular Trigons move 9. Weapon skill 3 plus, ballistic skill 4 plus. Strength 7. Toughness 6. Uh, 12 wounds, 6 attacks, very healthy amount of attacks, leadership 7, 3 up slate. Come with 3 pairs of massive Siren Tans, a Toxin Spike, and they're armed with Bioelectric Pulse. The Bioelectric Pulse, just the usual is, is as it was, Strength, uh, Range 12, Assault 6, Strength 5, AP 0, 1 damage. So the massive Siren Tans is the great part about these, you know, 6 attacks coming in at freeze to hit, you're on minus 3 and then D6 damage. You're on uh, reroll ones. If you've got more than one pair, it's additional attacks. You're on seven attacks, fantastic. Really is good. The other great thing about these is the subterranean assault. Oh no, look what's happened. Uh, oh no, maybe let's have a look here. During deployment, you can set up a trigon underground instead of placing it on the battlefield. At the same time, you can set up a, a Tyranid troops unit. Ah yes, it's Gene Stillers in the Trigon Tunnel. At the end of any of you, so they've changed now, you don't have this hole, as it was in the 7th edition, this hole in the ground you had to mark it, units could pour out, you just attach units and bring them up together. Brilliant. At the end of any of your movement phases, set up the Trigon anywhere on the battlefield that's more than 9 inches away from any models. If there is another unit in the Trigon's tunnel, set it up at the same time, hold within 3 inches of the Trigon, more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. Any unit, any models you cannot place in this way are destroyed. So I love the combo. One of them. And Gene Steelers. Bring them up together. Gene Steelers arrive, advance, charge. Deadly. Utterly deadly. So, they're fantastic. No, the Trigon's great. And it should be. No, this one's not. It's the Prime, is the synapse. Yep. So, you go for a Prime, pay a few points more. Uh, you get the Prime ability. Bioelectric Pulse becomes Assault 12, so you get more shots. But the, ma the massive uh, benefit there is becoming a Synapse creature, which is helpful if you're bringing up Gene Steelers, for example. So, yeah, and it's a heavy support, so you can go for Primes instead of the usual Trigon. So, nice. Big fan of the Trigon. So, uh, let's have a look here. Trigon, 108 points. Monstrous Siren Tans and... No, two or more pairs, here we go. 60 points for the Trigon and Trigon Prime. So you're looking at 60 points plus 108. Right, see, so now you're keeping it nicely below 200 and about 200 if you're going to go for the Prime. Make sure what you're getting isn't bad at all. No, so I would rate both of those. Okay, so uh, the Tyranocyte next. Costs 98 points, same as it was. 
Weapon skill, ballistic skill, 5 plus. Movement 6 on the top bracket, strength 5, toughness 6, 12 wins. 4 up save, leadership 7. D6 attacks, quite random. And it drops to D3 and then just 1. Uh, it's armed with 5 death spitters. Nice. It's quite a, quite a um, imposing model. The other thing about 8th edition now is you don't do arcs of fire for your weapons. So if you want to fire all 5 at the same target, whatever direction that is, you can find. You're actually looking at 15 shots. The only problem is your ballistic skill, which is 5 plus. Shame. Uh, you can replace those with barbed stranglers and venom cannons. Invasion organism during deployment. So you land, it's deep strike, not over 9 inches away. It can transport up to 20. Or a monster with a characteristic of 14. Or less. It's death rose. Any models that are inside the model are must immediately disembark in the same manner as unit disembarking from transport, except they must be more than nine inches away from any enemy models. That's alright, it's like a ten inch drop pod. Is it worth doing that? Maybe a situation where you want to just land down nice and quick. If you are looking to swamp the opponent quickly, then you know, maybe to get like a, a shooting unit nice and close with its weapons. Use one of them to bring it in. And the model just total domination of the, of the table. 12 wounds for the opponent to try and get through. Uh, I think they'd have their uses. In fact, if you have brilliant uses for these, a combination that works well for you, leave that in the comment section. Fascinating to hear how different tyranny players use those just there. Right, so onto flyers then. The Harpies next. So that's dedicated transport, by the way. Um, so the Harpy is 121 points. Or 78, but they probably amalgamated some of the costs for this. So under two strangle form cannons, scythe and wings. Also take fire. It can also fire stinger salvage. So a double strangle form cannon. So that's going to be 2d6 shots. Wow. Really good. Double strangle form cannon. It's 2d6 shots it would be. Assault d6. Range 36. Strength 7. AP minus 1. 2 damage. You can have 1 to hit rolls when you target units with more than 10 models. Amazing. With 10 or more models. Great. And scything wings in combat. You're going to get your free attacks. Yeah, this strength is off to 6 by the way. Um... Three attacks, there, four up save. In combat, you're going to be minus two on the AP, strength for the user, D3 damage, and your reroll hit rolls a one. So you could swap that out for heavy venom cannons, which is assault D3, range 36, strength nine, AP minus two, and free damage. Ouch. Harpy's great. 121 points. Then you've got to take heavy venom cannons. 25 points a time, so it's an extra 50 points on top of that. Um, or, the strangle form, I think it's the same actually, isn't it? I don't believe, 25, yeah. So 50 points either way. Both those weapons are nasty enough, but it's the ability to take two of them is really, really good. Let's see what else you get. Sonic Screech, when a harpy successfully charges to the end of the turn, units of an inch cannot be chosen to fight until all other eligible units have done so. And then you've got Spore Mine Cysts. If you fly over enemy units in the movement phase to do so after the Harpy has moved, pick an enemy unit that flew over and roll a d6 for each model in that unit to maximum free dice. Each time roll a 4, a Spore Mine has hit the target and explodes. <laughs> roll a d6 to find out how much damage is inflicted. On a 1, that's nothing happens. Uh, on a 2 to 5 it's a mortal wound and d3 mortal wounds if you're at 6 if you miss you place them within 6 yep cool brilliant right, harpy's fine harpy's really good and some nasty weaponry either of those two strangle form cannon and then the heavy venom cannon as well nasty as well right, so harpy's good then we're on to the Hive Croon. So 
a hive crone is armed with a draw cannon, tentacled scything wings, and a wicked spur. It also has stinger salvos. So 153 points. It was 92. Sure. Some difference there. Um, the draw cannon is zero. Uh, it was 16 in the other. Okay, so yeah, they, they just sort of merged the costs into the initial cost of the model here. Um, same stat line as above. Yes. Yep, yeah, so that's all that. Movement 30, by the way, for both of these. So very quick. Draw cannons, um, range 8, assault d6, strength 6, AP minus 1, it's auto hits. The only danger of that is just the d6. Life crown is not as good as it was. Stinger salvo, we've seen that already. Tentaclids, range 36, assault 4. You may reroll foul hit rolls this weapon against units that can fly. In addition, if it's a vehicle, a wound of a 4 plus, it suffers a mortal wound. If you roll a 6, it's d3 mortal wounds. And it's strength 5, AP 0, and 1 damage. Scything wings we've seen. The Wicked Spur. Each time you fight, you can make one and only one attack with this weapon in addition to your others. Comes in at strength 8. AP minus 3 and D3 damage. Death throws. No, the Harpy's better. I rate the Harpy now over the Higher Crown. It's switched around. So the Harpy's better. Real ability to harass from the sky. Decent firepower. You can drop spore mines, which is great fun. Uh, the models look really good. There's floating bombs. Uh, and then you can fight in combat anyway. And not do too bad. So I would rate the Harpy more. So that's the flight I would choose, I reckon. Okay, so last unit then, the Spore Assist here, is uh, 79 points. 79 points. Uh, weapons movement is. Oh. Oh, this is the. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this weapon's got ballistic skill 5 plus. Strength 5. Toughness 6. 12 wounds. D6 attacks on the highest stat line. Leadership 7 and 4 up save. It's a single model armed with a spore node and 5 death spitters. Spore node is 9 inch range, heavy one. And you just look at the rules below. Um, death spitters we know about. But you can change it for uh, 5 barbed stranglers or 5 venom cannons. It's a real gun platform. So you have to play, pay for those shooting options on top. And remember, it's only five plus to hit. So bombardment organism during deployment, you can. All right, so you can land, and it's more than nine inches away from enemy units. Uh, the bio fortress, it can shoot with its weapons even if there are enemies within an inch. It doesn't stop. You can't contact it in melee and stop it from shooting. Psychic resonator, whilst it's within twelve of a friendly synapse unit, it has the synapse keyword and synapse ability. Spawn spore mines. The end of your movement phase, a spore cyst can spawn spore mines. If it does so, add a new unit of three spore mines. That's 30 points. Or a muckaloid spore to your army and set it up on the battlefield. So it's wholly within six of the spore cyst, more than an inch from the enemy. You know, you drop a few of these down. Say your army's advancing up, drop a few of these down right close, and then start chucking out spore mines and shooting at stuff. And loads of wounds to get through. Ultimate distraction here really is good. It's immobile, but you know, if you place it tactically, can't see any harm in doing that. You know, maybe there's a you know turn one playing the relic game. Suddenly you drop a couple of these around the relic. <laughs> For the opponent to try and deal with. Not bad. The spawn node, each time a spawn node attack hits, it's a target or a d6 to find out how much damage is inflicted on the unit. On a 1, the mines fail to inflict any harm. On a 2 to 5, they inflict D3 mortal wounds. On a 6, they inflict D6 mortal wounds. Each time a spore node attack misses, set up a single alkaloid spore or a unit of up to 3 spore mines, anywhere from 6 inches of the target unit. Brilliant. Uh, and more than 3 inches from enemy model, follow the rules for spores. So, Sporocyst. 79 points plus your other weaponry. Let's say you took Death Spitters, five of them. It's eight times five. Barb Strangler, which isn't a bad weapon. Five D6 shots. It's horrid. Barb Strangler. 
how much would you pay for that? 10 points times, you had 50 points on top of that cost. Um, no, your, your, ballistic, your ballistic skill's not going to be affected. I do like these. Venom Cannon, 20 points times. You'd have to pay, God, that's 100 points to have Venom Cannons. No, I mean, Barb Strangers would be good enough. Even, well, even Death Spitters. Yeah, either of those two. Here, look at this. Barb Strang, you can have one to your hit rolls. So all of a sudden, your 5 plus becomes 4 plus to hit. So imagine, unit of, five, unit of uh, tactical marines, you fire at them with 5d6 shots, then force to hit, strength 5, you're going to freeze to wound an AP minus 1. Fantastic. So like the Sporocysts, and you say, well, my army's not really a shooty army, but, you know, it's more attacking. Well, let your army attack and drop a few of these huge things down. And then not only all of that, ability but the spore node is fantastic and the ability to spore mines spawn spore mines i really like these i think they're great anyway that's the end of all the units um so some fascinating insights there into different abilities and different units available really really good units available there for the terrans i can't see why they, they can't be a, a really strong army you've got all your options there um and there's some real fascinating units that I've not really considered before. So that's all the units reviewed. We've covered all of these pretty much. Yep. And here, and here, and there. So we're on to the extra rules now, which will be a fascinating part of this codex review. All right, so, uh, if your arm is battle forged, uh, it's objective secure, just as before. High fleet adaptions. If your army is battle forged, all units in the Tyranids detachments gain a high fleet adaption, which is these. Uh, as long as every unit in that detachment is from the same high fleet, fine. The high fleet adaption gain depends on the high fleet they're from, as shown in the table opposite. Okay, so you have to choose which one you're going to go for. So my, my uh, colour scheme is just open to, to any of these, really. So we'll probably just end up choosing the best one. So high fleet bear moth. High progression. You can reroll foul charge rolls for units of this adaption, so that's a great one to choose for my assault based army. Reroll charges. Amazing. Kraken. Questing tendrils. When a unit of this adaption advances, roll three dice instead of one and pick the highest uh, to move for all models in the unit for that movement phase. In addition, uh, such units can fall back and charge in the same turn. Brilliant. Brilliant advantages here. Leviathan, Synaptic, Imperative. Roll d6 each time a unit of this adaption loses a wound. Whilst it's been 6 of a friendly synapse unit on a 6, you ignore the damage. Okay, fantastic. Ignore it if you're affected by Catalyst. Gorgon. Uriel uh, wound rolls a 1 in the fight phase for units of this adaption. They're all pretty good. That one's not quite so good, maybe, but a lot of these are brilliant. Uh, Jormungander. Unit of this adaption. Other units that can fly always has the benefit of cover. If the unit advances or charges over, it loses the benefit. Okay. Hydra, Swarming Instincts. You can reroll hit rolls in the fight phase for units of this adaption that targeting that target units containing fewer models than their own. Okay, another handy rule. And then Kronos, Bio Barrage. You can reroll hit rolls of one for units of this adaption in your shooting phase, even if they even if they did not move in the preceding movement phase. So, really good. So you have shooty based army, then that one's a good option to choose from. So some great ones to choose from, uh, just there. Really, really good. But Bayamoth's one of the strongest, I reckon. Okay, so Stratagems is next here. It'll be fascinating to see what kind of enhancements you can grant to your force. So, Psychic Barrage first, one command point. Use a strategy in your psychic phase if a zone for option is in your army is consisting of at least three models is within six of two other such units. Right, so you've got to lump them all together. If you do so, the zone for ropes cannot take any psychic test this phase. Instead, select a point on the battlefield of an 18 of and visible to all three units. Roll a dice for each unit. Friend or foe within three inches at that point. Add one to result if the unit being rolled for is 10 or more models, but subtract one if it's a character. On a four plus, 
unit suffers 3d3 mortal wounds it's horrid but you'd, you'd have to have that many units to do that one for the zone groups one command point now for caustic blood use this strategy at the start of the fight phase select a tyranny's unit from your army or dice whenever a model in that unit is destroyed in this phase for each six the enemy unit that inflicted the final wound suffers a mortal wound after all their attacks have been resolved not that amazing rapid regeneration so this regeneration has made a comeback here two command points use a strategy at the end of your movement phase Select a Tyranny's model in your army. It regains D3 wounds lost earlier in the battle. That's okay. I mean, you could end up spending two command points. You lose them and you only regain a wound. So you'd have to be in a pretty desperate situation to try and regain that, or to use that. Scorch Bugs, one command point. Use the strategy when a Tyranny's unit from your army is selected to attack in the shooting phase. You can have one to your wound rolls made for that unit's flesh borer or flesh borer hive attacks in the shooting phase. Okay. Feeder tendrils is one command point. There's no major ones to stand out at the moment here. We're on the lookout for some real good ones. Feeder tendrils, one command point. Use this strategy when a gene steal lictor, toxicrine, or venom throat from your army kills a character, you gain D3 command points. Okay, so a chance to regain some of them back. Gene Stealer. Interesting. It's a chance my army can do that. Play that and then you get D3 command points back. So that's not bad, actually. It's pretty good. Uh, it's really good to need to remember that one. It's a fair chance of it happening during the game. You know, a, brute, a 15 strong Gene Stealer unit taking out a character. Uh, implant Attack is uh, next. So one command point. Use a stratagem after a tyranny's unit for your army fights in the fight phase, or a dice for each enemy model. Other than a vehicle that was wounded by any of this unit's attacks, not slain, on 2+, plus, it suffers a mortal wound. Okay. Interesting. So yeah, helpful enough. Uh, Bounty of the High Fleet, that's where you pay out to get extra relics, which we'll cover later. Metabolic Overdrive, one command point. Use the stretch from your movement phase. After moving a Tyranny's unit from your army, you can make a second move of that unit, including advancing if you wish. But when you do so, you must roll a dice for each model. Roll over one, you take a mortal wound. Unit cannot shoot or make a charge move. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> so, what's the point? You can't shoot or charge. Great. You just get the extra speed. So, not that helpful. Single-minded annihilation is next. Two command points. Use at the end of your shooting phase. Select a Tyranid's infantry unit from your army. You can immediately shoot again. <gasps> oh, not bad. It has to be infantry, then, not monstrous creatures, which is a shame. But that's helpful. Two point, two command points to it, but helpful. The ability to fire again. Okay, that one's pretty good. Grizzly Feast, use the stratagem in your morale phase. Select a unit of Ripper Swarms or Horror Specs from your army. Your opponent must add one to morale test taken for enemy units within six of that unit. Ugh, pretty poor. Pathogenic Slime, use the stratagem in your shooting phase. Select a Tyranny's monster in your army, increase the damage of its attacks by one. That is really good, especially if you've got multiple shots coming in. Nice, Pathogenic Slime. Helpful, really helpful. It's, as I said, especially if you've got multiple shots coming in, something like an Exocrine, for example, damage two becomes damage three. That is really good. And, and remember Exocrine, you know, six shots. If you're main stationary, another six shots, all of a sudden all of those hits coming through are causing three damage instead of two. There's the hot dog just there. That is a really good one. Pathogenic slime. So yeah, so there's a good one. That's a gem. Uh, Spore field. There's three command points this one. Use the stratagem after both armies are deployed but before the battle begins. You can add up to two units of spore mines to your army as reinforcements and set them up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than 12 inches from enemy models. Fantastic. Really good. 
so spore field fascinating for three command points you're getting 60 points of models yep brilliant uh, next one, so I really like that one as well. Invisible Hunter, one command point. Use the strategy from your movement phase, select Lictor for your armies uh, that is within an inch of the enemy unit. The model can fall back, shoot, and charge in the same turn. So helpful enough. Remember, these are all reusable, we don't use them once and then you lose them. But there's some good ones there. Next is Power of the Hive Mind, it's one command point. Use the strategy from the end of your psychic phase, select a Tyranid Psyker from your army. Manifest as a psychic power this turn, it can immediately attempt to manifest an additional psychic power this turn. Nice. That's one command point. Pheromone Trail. Uh, use the strategy when a tyranny's infantry unit from your army is set up on the battlefield as reinforcements. If there is already a lictor from your army on the battlefield, you can set up the unit wholly within six of the lictor and more than nine inches away from enemy models, rather than following the normal rules for setting up the unit. Interesting. Uh, Death Frenzy is two command points. Use the strategy when a tyranny's character from your army is slain. The hive mind compels it to one final attack. It can immediately either shoot, as if it were the shooting phase, or fight, as if it was the fight phase before it's removed from the battlefield. Nice. So yeah, you get to use that. Again, helpful, a critical point in the game. Overrun. Use this strategy when a tyranny's unit from your army destroys a unit in the fight phase and is not within three inches of an enemy unit. Instead of consolidating, the unit can move and advance, as if it was your movement phase. Can't move with an inch of enemy models. So overrun a nice bit of speed. It's only a command point for that. And then voracious appetite, one command point. Use a strategy in the fight phase when a tyrannous monster or character from your army is chosen to attack. You can reroll all foul wound rolls for that model until the end of the phase. Alright, so uh, pretty good. Alright, so that's that one there. And then uh, the enemy below. One command point, use a strategy when you get the jaw mung. Oh, this is for the. Uh, Different high fleets, uh, the Jormungadr infantry units during deployment. It is set up within tunnels bore before battle. Whenever you set up a unit of Raveners, Morlock, Trigon, Trigon Prime at the end of your movement phase, you can also set up any number of units uh, you set up with within the tunnels. Set up the unit, hold it within three, just the usual rule. So you can just multiple units you can deploy that way, which is great. Uh, next one, Brute Force, is one command point. Use a stratagem for Bearmoth units when your army completes a charge move or a dice for each model in the charging unit that is within an inch of an enemy unit for each roll of a six or a two plus for a monster. Inflict one mortal wound on an enemy unit of an inch. Very good indeed. Okay, and then War on all fronts. This is for Leviathan. Stratagem in the fight phase, select an enemy unit of an inch for at least one Leviathan unit from your army that can fly, and at least one that cannot, you cannot reroll. You can reroll hit and wound rolls at one in this phase for attacks for Leviathan units that target that enemy unit. So that's that one. Then uh, three command points, call the brood. Use this strategy at the end of your movement phase. Add a new unit of five genius seers to your army and set them up as reinforcements, holding within six inches of a brood lord or infestation node from your army, more than nine inches from enemy models. So. Quite expensive, but you get some extra models. And then Adrenaline Surge. Use a strategy at the end of your fight phase. Select a Tuna's unit from your army that can fight immediately. Again, great, but it's three command points to do it. So you raw incentives to get as many command points as you possibly can into your force. Or go character hunting and generate extra uh, command points that way. One command point for the deepest shadow. Use a strategy when enemy Psyker attempts to manifest a Psychic Power in 24 of a Kronos unit from your army. Your opponent can only roll a single dice for the Psychic Test. Hypertoxicity is one command point. Use a strategy in the fight phase. Choose a Gorgon unit from your army that has the Toxin Sax Biomorph. For the duration of the phase, the Toxin Sax Biomorph causes one additional damage on wound rolls of 5 plus, rather than 6 plus for attacks made by that unit. So that's that one. Endless Swarm. Use the stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Two command points. Select unit of termagants, hormigants, gargoyles, or uh, for a Hydra infantry unit from your army that has been completely destroyed. Add an identical unit to your army. Set it up as reinforcements. Hold within six of the board edge, more than nine inches from enemy models. So, Endless Swarm. Really good. And then Opportunistic Advance. This is for High Fleet Kraken. 
use a stratagem in your movement phase when you roll the dice for an advancing Kraken unit other than unit that can fly. You can double the number you roll and add one and add that total to their move characteristic for that movement phase rather than following the normal rules for advancing. And then the last one here, digestive denial, is two command points. Use the stratagem after deployment before the first battle round begins. Choose a piece of terrain other than a fortification. Units fully within or on this piece of terrain do not gain any bonus. Saves for cover. Okay, so not bad. It's a good spread there. Some pretty good ones. A number of these ones here are pretty good. Ability to fight again in combat, shoot again for infantry or for monsters. Those are some of my favourites, I reckon. Some ones that are really worth remembering uh, during the middle of the game. So, uh, Hive Mind Discipline then. Uh, the six of them now Dominion, Walk Charge Value of 5, Select for any unit of 36, has the Instinctive Behaviour ability until the end of the Psychic Phase. Uh, the unit ignores its Instinctive Behaviour and automatically passes morale. So you can try and help out the unit that way. Which is quite a minor. Catalyst is your 5 plus ignore damage, it's Walk Charge Value of 6, range 18. As before. The Horror is a value of 6, select unit within 24, it's minus 1 from the hit rolls and leadership for them. These are quite helpful these for the Tyranids. Onslaught is a walk charge value of 6, select a friendly Tyranid unit within 18 of the Psyker. Unit can shoot this turn even if it advanced without suffering any penalties to hit rolls for moving and shooting heavy weapons. That's helpful or advancing and shooting assault weapons. In addition, the unit can charge this turn even if it did advance. Onslaught's really good. Very, very helpful. Paroxysm, walk charge value of 5. If manifested, choose an enemy unit of an 18 of the Psyker until your next Psychic phase. Unit can fight in the fight phase until all other units are able to, able to have done so. If the target unit has an ability that allows it to fight first in the fight phase, instead fights as if it didn't have this ability. If both players have units that cannot fight, until all units have done so, then alternate choosing which of the units to fight with, starting with the player whose turn it is. And then, Psychic Scream. Walk charge value of 5, nice low number. If manifested, nearest enemy unit within 18 suffers D3 mortal wounds. In addition, if that unit is a Psyker, roll 2 dice. If the result is higher than the leadership characteristic, randomly select one of their Psychic powers. They no longer have use of that Psychic power. So, not bad. A lot of Tyranid units or HQs are psychers by default so you're going to get a nice spread of options that are available now there's six powers to choose from catalyst is really good onslaught seems really good horror is pretty good psychic scream is pretty good as well so a lot more choice available for psychic powers for the hive mind so uh bio artifacts then all the relics that are available so uh, if your army's battleforged, you get one of these, and you can purchase more with your uh, stratagems. Cybers of Tyrant, Beowulf only, with monstrous Cyber and Talons, you then get plus one strength, maybe minus three, uh, damage of three. Get an additional attack. Just the usual, that's just extra strength for that one, pretty good. Remember these are free of charge, so these are good. The, the Arm Yumgar Factor, beginning of the fight phase, or D3 for this model, and apply the following. Plus one strength, plus one attack, plus one toughness. Available there. Interesting. That's yeah. helpful for some really good character of some kind. No problem. Decent enough. Reaper of Obliterax, model with a lash ribbon bone sword, or lash ribbon monstrous bone sword only. Add the following to the weapon's abilities. A roll of a six plus the weapon inflicts double damage. Nice. Need to remember that though, in the middle of a game. Uh, chameleonic mutation, Kraken models only. The opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls for ranged weapons that target this model. Helpful for something like a Hyper Tyrant with, that can be hit with its 12 wounds. Um, Hyperadaptive biology is for Gorgon models or a model. At the end of the first phase in which this model suffers any wounds, add one to its toughness the remainder of the battle. Slayer Sabres. It's Leviathan, monstrous bone swords only. It gets strength use, AP minus two and, and three damage. Nice. In addition, if, if, an in, if an infantry or biker model suffers damage with this weapon but is not slain, roll D3 at the end of the fight phase. 
If the result is greater than the model's remaining number of wounds, it's slain. So extra damage against them. Slayer Sabres, sounds really good. Um, Slimer Maggot Infestation. Hydra models with two Death Spitters and Slime Maggots only. The Slime Maggot Infestation replaces the two Death Spitters with Slime Maggots and becomes range 24, strength six, uh, assault 6, strength 7, AP minus 1. Nice, and your reroll wounds. Nice. The Baleform Cannon is Kronos. They're quite restricted, these relics here, to particularly high fleet. Kronos. Model with strangle form cannon becomes assault d6, strength 7, AP minus 1, 2 damage. And you get plus 1 to hit uh, for 10 or more models, and you can't take in buttons. Nice. So, much better enhancement there. The more claws of fire axe models, um, models with rending claws are monstrous rending claws only. When this model slays an enemy model in the fight phase, you can reroll failed hit rolls in all subsequent fight phases. For this model, the Norn Crown friendly tyranny units do not suffer the penalties to their hit rolls and charge rolls incurred from the instinctive behaviour ability whilst they're in 30 inches of this model. Not bad. And then the Miasmic Cannon, or Miasma Cannon, model with a heavy Venom Cannon only, then becomes range 36, Assault D3, Strength 9, AP minus 2, and free damage. This weapon hits, auto hits on the target of an 8 and always wounds targets other than vehicles on a 2 plus. Nice. Yeah, there's some pretty good weapon upgrades here. All pretty good. And then Infrasonic Roar, a Jormunda monster only. Enemy units within 6 of this model, minus 1. Leadership. Okay. So that's those, yeah, some pretty good. Uh, shooting options there, pretty good. Yeah, and a couple of decent um, melee options there as well. So not too bad, and they're free of charge, so it's worth uh, choosing one of those uh, and using it. So Warlord traits then, standard Warlord traits, and there's some specific to the uh, High Fleet, just there. So, uh, Alien Cunning. Start of the first battle round, before the first turn begins, you can remove your Warlord from the battlefield and set him up again. If both players have units that can do so, you roll off. Whoever wins, the roll off. Okay, so you can remove him and put him back on. Maybe helpful. Uh, heightened Senses. The Warlord never suffers any penalties to their hit rolls, although they still only hit on six when firing Overwatch. Mm, okay. Majorly good. Synaptic Linchpin. Get six to the synapse, that's helpful enough. Although well, synapse isn't that great a thing to get worried about. Now I don't think Mind Eater, each time Warlord slays an enemy character in the fight phase, choose a friendly unit within three inches. At the end of that phase, the unit can move and advance as if it was your movement phase. Interesting. Instinctive Killer, beginning of the battle before the first turn, choose an enemy unit, you can reroll failed hit rolls for the Warlord, or attacks the target that unit or any unit that has the same data sheet, for example, all intercessor squads, or all units of knobs, etc. Right, okay, so that one's pretty good. Reroll hits, choose any unit you want. Yeah, that one's one of the stronger ones. And then adaptive biology, at the end of the first phase in which a warlord suffers any wounds for the remainder of the battle, when inflicting damage, the warlord reduces the damage of the attack by one, to a minimum of one. That's helpful as well to protect the Warlord to some degree. Is there okay? Nothing madly, majorly good. Maybe Instinctive Killer is one of the good ones. So in High Fleets, Bayamoth gets each time I make a wound of a six, uh, the attack inflicts one additional damage. It's alright. Monstrous Hunger. One step ahead in each fight phase, you can pick one friendly Kraken unit in six of your Warlord. The unit can fight first in the fight phase, even if it didn't charge. If the enemy has units that have charged or have a similar ability, they alternate choosing units to fight with starting with the player whose turn is taking place. Okay, so that's all right. Leviathan, perfectly adapted once per battle round. You can reroll a single hit roll, wound roll, damage roll, advance roll, or saving throw for your Warlord. 
once per round. Yeah, helpful enough. The re-roll, that'd be helpful. Uh, Gorgon, Lethal, Miasma, at the end of the fight, phase roll d6 for the enemy. Each enemy unit within an inch of the Warlord on a 4 plus, they take a mortal wound. Very small bonuses, really. Nothing too major. And, you know, easily forget them during a the game. Uh, enemy units, this is for uh, Jewel Mungda, Insidious Threat. Enemy units never gain any bonus to their saving throws for being in cover. Made by the Warlord of Friendly, Jewel Mungda units within 3 inches of him. Helpful if you've got a shooty type army. Hydra, Endless Regeneration. At the beginning of each of your turns, roll dice for each wound your Warlord has. For each six, Warlord regains a wound. That is fantastic. Endless Regeneration. That's the best one by far. Really good for Hydra. And then Kronos, Soul Hunger. Whenever an enemy Psycho fails a Psycho test within 18, they suffer D3 mortal wounds. Alright, so that is it. Just giving information about named character and Warlord traits just there. But uh, Endless Regeneration is the good one. Imagine that on a Hive Tyrant. Every turn, rolling sixes to get wounds back. It is brilliant. Very, very good indeed. There's your points costs and just some tactical objectives added there at the end as well. So that's the review then for the brand new Tunis Codex. By all means, leave your comments and feedback. Uh, your overall impression of Tunis now, do they compete with the other armies that are out there for 8th edition? Is the codex decent enough? I think there's some great bonuses in there, some pretty strong stratagems. Units have been improved, especially things like Carnifexes, um, and a lot of the decent units still remain really good. Trigons, Trigon Primes, Broodlords, all good units as well. So Tune is strong enough now, I think, for sure, um, and now definitely will be enhanced with the features in the new codex. So that's the review complete. Check out gamingfigures.com, you can get uh, the codex from uh, them uh, or Games Workshop directly, you can get it available uh, from them uh, as well. But that's the review. Keep a look out for future reviews for the new codexes as they come out. But Codex Tyranids, uh, there it is, that's the review and Tactica as well. Leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.